Welcome to Both Down, episode 82, the number one Blood Bowl podcast. From my new house. Yay! We're in like Steveville. Have you named it yet? We named the house? house. Yeah. Do we typically name houses? Well, it's actually we are in a new studio. Yes. So we sound professional. Yeah. And you had to give this thing like a name. The Ginger Dome? That is Steve Kilowaggy Campbell, and I am Scott Prime. Welcome to Both Down. Yes, welcome, and welcome to the studio, my house, that has no name. We're going to have to give it a name. Maybe that should be a contest. To name the studio? To name the studio here. Okay. <laughs> I'm mean, down for that. It could be. Yeah. Uh, if you think of a good name for the studio, let me know, and email us, or tweet us, or Facebook us. Yeah, everything's got to have a name. Email's probably best, but whatever. I realized for the first time in my life, about two weeks ago, I bought a TV for the first time in my life. Really? It's the first TV I purchased new. I've always been blessed like, oh, I need a new TV around Christmas, you know, or something. And somebody's like, hey, let me help you out. Or I got hand-me-downs. I bought the first TV ever. And one of the options in it is name your TV. Yeah. Why? For networks. Okay. Well, I got caught naming it after an adult porn star. and <laughs> Chasey Lane? or No, I don't like to, I, It was going to be Vanessa Del Rio. It right. was going to be Christy Canyon because that was the very first one that popped in my head. And then it went to Vanessa Del Rio. And Jennifer kind of made a point with, no, we don't need that. Because what if one Someone's going to Google it. Goes Googles it. Oh, yeah. For and sure. I was like, I want, in my head... I thought I could talk to the TV, like maybe it has a voice thing, where I could go, Vanessa Del Rio, please change it to ESPN. And she would say, like, okay. And I thought that would be awesome. No. It doesn't work so that way. So now I have a TV named Tom Brady. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else. Well. I named it Son Goku from Dragon Ball. Yeah. And then, like. One of the kids caught me, and they didn't know who that was. I didn't really want to explain to them as a 44-year-old who has recently maybe purchased some DVD collections of Dragon Ball Super and has been watching them. I didn't want to explain it to them. Okay. So anyways, I bought TV. Yeah, now that you mention it, the TV that I bought is the first time I bought a brand new TV to myself. Just recently? Yeah. Wow, see? Because before that, I've I've had hand-me-downs or Christmas presents or I bought off friends or something. We have popped our cher- TV cherries in the same year. Yeah. That's neat. I'm, it's, it's it's something, yeah. This is why we're both down. I don't think that's why, for, but okay. For like brand new TVs. Yeah, it's nice. So how do you like being alone? <laughs> is that a metaphysical question <laughs> or just in the house? No, you are probably more of a lone person than me. Oh, much so, yeah. And so, therefore, how do you like having a house where you don't have to worry about children or crappy roommates who don't listen to you? It's pretty amazing. Oh, there you go. And you were never crappy. The children were never a problem. But, yeah, I'm much more of an introvert. I need alone time to recharge and got plenty of it all i know is now you can watch 10 movies in a row without your roommate coming in going have you been sitting there all day pretty much yeah and you're thinking dude you just wasted your life doing something else (laughs) you spent 10 hours playing kingdom death monster and (laughs) doing nothing (laughs) exactly so you don't have that but you miss it don't you no (laughs) i mean you are literally a street away so it's not like i will never see you and yet this is the first time i've been over here since you've totally been moved in that's true well, technically, I've only been totally moved in for two days. So, if you are new to the podcast and you've never heard us before, thank you. Yeah. Um, it's odd, but okay. We'll right. take it. Yeah, we'll take it. I'm sure it's new to somebody. So, no, just true. to explain what's going on in life until you catch up on all nearly 100 episodes a of A brief specials. history of both down. So, me and Steve were friends. We did a podcast. Life happened and put a situation where we actually moved in together and became roommates and podcast hosts. For five years well, or so? Yeah, about five. Is it more than five or five? My brain just misses. Like right time. at five. I don't know. Um, so we've been roommates for a while and. Obviously done the podcast at his house for a while. And then Steve loved me so much 
he decided to let me go. <laughs> I was explicitly told, the girlfriend's moving in in two months. You need to leave. <laughs> and he bought a house right behind me, pretty much. Yeah, catty corner. Yeah, and um, here we are. So we're still really close. Yeah. And um, we all both now have our separate houses. Yeah, and I've got a three-bedroom house. And the second bedroom is now the studio. It's got, it's got the gaming computer and... Need to put some foam up on the wall to make it sound better. But I think it sounds pretty good so far. Yeah. So it's uh, pretty neat. So now Steve's going to have the house that I escaped to. Yeah. To get away. Like you had before. <laughs> like I had before. Although, <laughs> I keep thinking, like, I might not have as many excuses to leave as I did before. <laughs> yeah. I don't plan on that situation ever breaking down to the old situation i would not expect it to, <laughs> but you never do so. so no that's true no everything's over at my house we've been i i say we i'm not gonna jennifer has been painting everything. jennifer has been repainting about half the house she's done a great job my mother's came out and helped her mm -hmm. some so she's had to put up with her <laughs> and uh looks good and um i don't know so i don't know what else to say except like we have the moving trucks coming today for the big final load of stuff. And yeah. then then the combining of two houses into one begins probably tonight. It'll be interesting. Well, it's weird because we both want our computers in our bedroom. And yeah. we don't want to consolidate down to one computer. Why not? S I don't know. Because hers is more of a wow machine, so it can uh, play video games, yeah. okay. and mine's not. No, yours is pretty shitty. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Never thought about it. I have all my, you know, all my art files and yeah. stuff on mine, but I guess all that can be moved. But it's just odd, because it, changing your mindset to be a partner, mm -hmm. a two-headed giant versus two solo people, Yeah, it's just different retaking this path with a different person yeah and a better person and we're both having to change you know kind of living single and becoming like one unit mm -hmm. and stuff and we get the joys of like having some preteens so like yeah, now i know them. why my dad was always bitching at me yeah it's like they're all kind of lazy and they don't want to take showers mm -hmm. and it's just part of being a kid yeah. But now it's like, I kind of sometimes I want to like call my dad and go, okay, dude, I, I get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that happens a lot. I mean, you have to atone for your past mistakes. <laughs> so, for example, and I know we're talking a lot of slice of life stuff here. So, so yesterday, her kid who used to love mowing lawns yeah. is really, when he's done with something, he's completely done. Yeah. And he was complaining about being so hot. And I was like, if you don't finish the lawn, you don't get paid. So he did, like, the front lawn and half of the back. And he just was done. Uh, I don't want to do it. And I was like, well, it's got to be finished. So if I finish it, you're not getting paid. He's like, oh, it's okay. And so yeah, that's the not neighborhood girls down doesn't the street bode well were for my over. Yard. <laughs> the neighborhood girls down the street, um, they mow lawns because if their mom, if they want a backpack, their mom mm -hmm. says, go earn it. I mean, their mom's pretty, I want to say rough, but at the same time, probably teaching them some good things. It's, yeah. It's a single mother who has a few kids. Okay. And so I understand her situation. And sure. Kudos to her, but her kids are down quite often lately mm -hmm. because we have cable and they don't. And Got so I've been feeding extra kids out and mm -hmm. stuff, you know. <clears throat> Anyways, the youngest one... You know, talked about mowing lawns, and I said, "Hey, Lexi, you want to go finish uh, a lawn?" I said, "I'll pay you five bucks right in front of <laughs> uh, Jennifer's oldest." And um, so I, uh, I, what, what do you want to call it? Um, she took cut the, a deal. I cut a deal, <laughs> and I gave the five bucks I was giving to my oldest kid <laughs> to the neighborhood kid for only a half of the backyard. That's good. And I thought it'd be a good lesson for him to see that. Mm -hmm. And here she is 15 minutes later done she has five bucks nice so i still got my lawn mode without me doing it i need mine done i know he knows it too it's <laughs> i only pay five bucks where like most people 
pay ten yeah. or so. So he'll probably mow yours and not gripe. Okay. I mean, I'm basically his dad now, so he's gonna <laughs> hate me. <laughs> yes. That's just I'm how, basically uh, your dad now. Well, that's true. <laughs> I know, I, I understand. Mean, we're all living under one house and I see him way more than his father, so That's true. That's sad, but yeah. Mm. So it's probably better for him. Um I don't know. I'm just a dude, so but yeah. I'm, but I'm there. <laughs> so enough of that. Um anyways, I look forward to changes. Ch -ch -ch changes. Like I can see a lot of like great positive ones, but I'm scared to death still. Oh yeah. If that makes sense. Oh uh, definitely. I was even telling Jennifer, like, now you can go out and do stuff because you have a babysitter at home if you want to go out. Very where true. before she couldn't do that. The problem with that is you guys are both similar enough to where you guys want to do stuff oh, the same I know thing. This. I know that. If I go out and play board games with the guys, oh, Jennifer yeah. wants to be with the guys and hang mm -hmm. out. So that's just something we're going to have to adapt to. And you made the mistake of getting her into Blood Bowl. So <laughs> well, no, all of that. You can't escape with that now. It's like a great double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and to be fair, if she went to a Blood Bowl tournament without me, I'd be pissy too. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Well, Steve and Jennifer and Michael Lewis <laughs> all went up to Iowa, and I'm here with the kids. Meh. So that would be funny, though. That would be funny, but I'd let her do it. Of course. So I'd probably be pissy, though. Okay. So I think that's enough for yeah miscellaneous so BS talk. That's updating well, life. As if we you know. have any questions about the new split situation, <clears throat> please let us know. Yeah, no, this has no, been why. a nice divorce, folks. Don't know why you would. Oh, us. Yeah. Yeah. I got More to keep separation. the game table. You did. Until, oh, it was your until gift I anyways. die and then Steve gets it. Yeah. Until you get sick of it. <laughs> well, that might happen too. Yeah. It is amazing and oddly just a little bit too big. Yeah. I really regret not making it a three by six or whatever. <laughs> I don't know if. So we should have measured better. But no, that's okay. I think if it was. Three by four or it's whatever. Basically six foot by six foot. Yeah. It's 59 inches by 59 inches. Yeah. Which is five foot. Oh, five foot. I'm sorry. Um, I think it was five by four. It might be better. Yeah. But it's pretty awesome when you need all that space. Oh, yeah, definitely. Anytime somebody sees it, though, they get all jealous about it and mm -hmm. stuff. So. And I'd like to do another one for the other room, but <clears throat> I also don't want to spend the money, do the work, or deal with the heat. So what you're saying is, is we need to just pay your father enough money for his 80-year-old self to go out and build us two perfectly designed game tables. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I can't pay him enough. <laughs> <laughs> Materials alone is just eh. Was it a lot? Yeah. Jim Roofer was asking me about it uh, um, yesterday, actually. All together, including gas and food and everything, it was probably 700 bucks. Well, okay. Take away gas and food. How much was the materials? Five. Really? That something? much? Wow. Well, it it's the material. It's it's all the wood. It's all the hardware. It was having to buy all the stain, having to buy extra uh, drill bits or whatever whenever mm -hmm. something broke. Well, yeah. That's part um, of it, I guess. It was having to buy the neoprene. That was 80 bucks there just wow. by itself. So, and then I had to buy the top things twice even though they didn't come out right gotcha so i think it was about 500 okay wasn't cheap but well, that's that, fine that explains why they're so expensive to get a custom bill one too. oh yeah so and then paying for labor and stuff and yours is nicer than a lot of the custom built ones yeah i really sure. like it so all right folks let's talk some blood bowl that's why you're here right no no why, the, why the you one guy then? said no oh the one guy the, yeah. our studio audience <laughs> <laughs> we have a letter from a listener. Hi, everybody. I have a question. <laughs> that um, might be a reference to another podcast. Yeah, let's not make fun of other podcasts yeah. too much. I can't help it. He, I know. He wants us to talk about it. It's hard. Yeah. All right. So we're going to talk Blood Bowl. Uh, what do we have on the docket today? Well, new stuff came out, so I think we'll be having to talk about that. We got new Dark Elf stuff. Lots of new stuff. And some Lots dwarf stuff, stuff and chaos stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm excited to talk about that. Okay. Uh, then we have, um, we had kind of a little subject come up on Facebook, and somebody asked. Anyways, we have some tournament talk. 
Yeah. So we're going to talk about a few different things, a couple different subjects on tournaments and upcoming tournaments, and then like an etiquette. I guess it's kind of etiquette, yeah, but it's not really etiquette. question. So we have some tournament talk, and then we're going to talk about some golden star players in our third and final segment, and then we'll have some shout outs maybe, and we'll wrap it up. Sounds good. All right. We'll be right back. Both Down is brought to you by Wizards Asylum, your premier source for comics and games in Norman, Oklahoma. Check them out online at wizardsnorman.com. Now we're going to talk about the new stuff, what everybody's been wanting forever, right? Forever? Maybe. Forever, ever? I mean, you've heard people say they want new teams, so we got a new team. Well, we got, yeah, I guess so. Kind of. It's an old team. It's an old team, new. So let's talk about other stuff before we get to the magazine. Right. So I guess we weren't talking about the magazine, but Dark Elves came out, obviously. So the team, to me, like, looks really cool. The physical team looks pretty cool. Now, I've Um, heard putting them together is a pain in the butt. There is a thumb that you have to attach. Oh, dude, they just lost me. Yep. A thumb. (laughs) Serious? Serious. 100%. Like, I think one of the players, you have to attach the right thumb. Okay. And I understand I don't know molding or why they break up parts into certain parts. But as a guy that just put together a bunch of resin figures from Shadows of Brimstone, Mm -hmm. putting together a little gun onto a hand and stuff. Screw that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So this goes back to the idea that they really need to put on this stuff what level of, I guess, assembly. Complexity. Yeah. So a beginner gamer could not put these together. Well, I agree with you. Because I didn't realize it was that complex. Yeah. I heard these were much more complex. It's like six pieces for some of them. Uh, we have a guy who's going to probably come to League Night who picked up a Blood Bowl set from you. Yeah. And the big thing was is I, I don't know how to model. I don't really want to mess with it. And I was like, oh, these are snap fit. They're yeah. really easy. Those are great. So he was thinking about buying other teams. And I told him I don't know if they're really snap fit anymore. The Skaven are pretty easy. The Dwarves... Don't seem that difficult. I put together the dwarves. For They're not the most super part. easy. The little back piece is the one that you have to really pay attention. So to. I would say, like the box set, beginner level, Skaven, beginner probably, dwarves intermediate, these stupid elves expert. Yeah. Regular elves, I think we're fine too. I'm not positive. Didn't actually put them together yet. So do you actually open your dark elves? No. no. Okay. No, I, no need. Well, I know s- I've got enough Dark Elf teams. I've got the second and third ed. Okay. Well, I figured you weren't opening them. Yeah. But I'm glad that you have more feedback than even I do. I would like to, but the one thing that bothers me is the scales on them, or whatever their wrap is. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. I, want, I need to see more, because I love Dark Elves. They're one of my favorite teams. But I need to see someone paint them in a better way. Like, the paint jobs they have in the book and everything aren't bad, but that... You're talking about, like, for the sashes and yeah, stuff? Yeah, the sashes like, and stuff. They look like... They look like scales. S- scales from a dragon or some, yeah. a hydra or something. I don't get that. Eh, maybe they're just going... I think they're just going for a different look. They're you going for a gonna... look. I get that, yeah. <clears throat> now, I think it'd be interesting to take this, use those, and maybe file down some of the spikes or something and make them into sea elves. Because hmm. they keep talking about sea elves. And yes, they do. If those are fish scales or something, I don't know. Maybe you I do would something. not be shocked if we don't see sea elves if Blood Bowl lasts for a while. They have talked that they want to put out all the regular teams first and then they'll get to the new type of teams because they talked about maybe doing a corn team or you know, sea elves or whatever, right? But that'll be a long time from now. Well, of course, because how many teams are out now? Uh, so we have humans, orcs, orcs skaven, dwarves, uh, dwarves elves, elves um, chaos, chaos, and now this. So is that s- it? seven teams? Yeah. Which Goblins. Is, oh, 
Yeah, goblins. I've heard goblins, that. technically. So then you got Chaos Pact. Until which, the secret weapons come in the goblin box, it's not really goblins, if you ask me. But, uh, you know, yeah. they didn't ask me. So. No, they didn't. I don't like the fact that... So really, we have 10 out of the 23? Because <clears throat> Chaos Pact and... So it's 24 minus Slon, which will never happen. So, so 23. 23. Uh-huh. So we had 8 and then Chaos Pact plus Renegades. Because you can do both of those. Chaos Pack and Renegades are the same thing, buddy. Okay. So you mean Underworld? Underworld, yes. Yeah, you can make an Underworld I don't know team. the new names. Underworld Denizens. Denizens, yeah. And then the Chaos Renegades. So we have 10 out of 23. Yeah. And if they do four a year, we got a while. That's okay. Yeah. Somebody like GW, who does great models, we can't, none of us can complain about that. No. Um, I complain that there's too many models with one foot on the ground. Yeah. So they're not solid and they break easy and everything. But and we also don't like players that have balls in their hands. Right. But their models are amazing. Yeah. I think they could, in four years, if Blood Bowl's still selling enough for them to make new teams, you could make a different version of a human team and people would buy it. Well, they have, technically. Sort of. With the resin heads and stuff. Yeah. yeah well, they have. The Bright Crusaders. Right. I'm just saying... So really what they should do... Five years from now, if there was another Dark Elf team with a different design, I, yeah. think, I think it would sell is what I'm getting at. You could repeat to, teams. To me, what they should do is, I guess, say next year, since it's two years since it came out, do another box set with two different teams. Totally agree with that. So then you have two teams, the a new, a easier way to get the core rules that has everything in it. Totally agree with that. And, you know, maybe mark it up some because you got a new pitch and new teams, all that. I have no problem with anything you just said because they do that all the time with Warhammer 40K. Yeah. There's two armies in the box. You know, if you want more, you can go get it. Yeah. Um, and I'd be, I'd be down for that in a second. So the new team does not have a full new team. People are just going to have to accept that you're going to have to buy two box sets. So here's an interesting thing. If we, I know this is talking about the cards. But if we go to the cards for uh-huh. the elves, and I gotta find it. Hold on a second. For the dark elves. Yeah. Okay. So we buy the box elf box of dark elf cards. Okay. And you've got your card, your uh, positional cards. positional cards. So we got lineman, lineman, runner, assassin. Okay. It has an assassin card with a figure from the box. Now people online have been talking about that being a mistake, and they screwed up, and how. Weird. But you could make a full team out of this. Oh, easily. Okay, so in the Spike magazine, that same model picture is also being used for a runner. Okay. Because that's what I would assume it was, too. And now the this whole thing breaks down when you look at a runner card, and it's definitely alignment. For sure. So, yeah, they just screwed up. All right. So, I don't know. And supposedly assassins are coming to Forge World. Forge World, see? Ugh. Yeah, well, I understand why they do it, because they can get away with it, and people spend money on it, so they make more money on it, but I think it's crap. But they didn't ask me. There was some talk about the Citadel getting Forge World stuff, so it's possible that we could be just a drive away from getting whatever we need, hmm. which would be nice. After putting resin figures together from... Mm-hmm. Shadows of Brimstone, I don't ever want to mess with resin. Really? That bother? I just didn't like it. But, I mean, Shadows of Brimstone and GW games are night and day. I mean, like quality yeah. for miniatures, so it's not fair to compare. Okay. I'm just saying I did not enjoy putting models together. <laughs> yeah, but you normally don't anyways. One, I didn't know that super, like, regular model plastic glue wouldn't work on it. Yeah. So, like, I put them all together, and then, like, they held together. But if you wanted to just pull them apart with... Very little effort, you could. Jeez. So I was like, what? I I had to go to the hive mind of uh, Facebook and ask around, like, hey, I'm trying to build these. What do I need? And, you know, the Blood Bowl community was awesome and helped out. So. That's good. So if I ever do build Forge World models, I have the probably right glue and um, primer to do so. That's good. So team looks awesome. Yes. Uh, you don't get assassins in the box, but you, I think you pretty much get everything else. Well, if you buy two boxes, you'll have some extra runners to make into assassins. Or yeah, exactly. 
do what I did with my third edition team, use the extra witch elves to yeah. be the assassins. As long as you color code the bases, you're good. Yeah, you're fine. So no, not a big deal. And at least these are plastic, so they are easy to mod. Very much so. I agree with that. So what else do we get? We got new pitches. We got the chaos pitch finally, and we got the new dark elf pitch. Which has like a kraken on the back or something? Yeah. So okay, have you opened yours? I have not yet. So uh, I've been you, too busy. Do you know with if they have in. special rules? It does have a special rule. I don't know exactly what it is. Yeah. Okay. Because the chaos one, you turn over <clears throat> and it's like they've been sacrificed, and the blood does something. <laughs> Speaking of, I'm glad we'll just talk about this right now. Yeah. I love Blood Bowl. I get that it's violent. I get that people die. I get people get their necks broke. I get that people in this world sacrifice to chaos gods and mm-hmm. everything else i'm weird because like i want it to be more parody than bloody if that makes sense that makes sense yeah and i look back at second edition stuff which is what i grew up on so of course I'm, i think it's better right and like it's in there but it's not i don't know it's not as, as prevalent in your face yeah. maybe as it is now it's also more goofy and now like Pro- this magazine has a lot of death and dismemberment and i, right. mean, I get it it's dark elves but no i get it too and it's just it doesn't bug me like i, I hate it or anything right. but it's it's not my blood bowl <laughs> this seems odd i get it i mean so I guess you could make a Blood Bowl comic or story, and it could be very, very, really gruesome and gritty if you wanted to Mm -hmm. with this new stuff, which in my brain, it's never that. It's always goofy goofy and silly and a sport and, you know, a goofy, silly sport. So they have definitely taken it to a more serious level. Which, which is, is kind of neat, but it which still is has the, the grim, dark kind of feel of Warhammer, anyway. Yeah, so but it still has fun. the goofiness in it. It does, but they definitely let you know about people dying and sacrifices and blah 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 blah. Right. I know. I'm being kind of weird. That's okay. Um. So, so the dice. You the said dice, that these were your favorite. Of the so new ones? far, these are my favorite of the new dice because the one, contrast is so good. One, I love purple. Yeah. I'm a big fan of purples and greens, and this one's a purple that is not solid purple, but kind of marbly. Mm-hmm. I guess you would explain it. And with the white for the inlay, it pops really good. My old man eyes can see it. I love it. You know, it's one of my favorite colors, and I can see it really well. Cool. I still think the new symbols. Do not read as well as the old symbols. We've talked about that many times. Yeah. Even new players that's never seen the old dice, once they see the old dice, they're like, oh, you can really read these. Yeah. Without any confusion. But they're not changing them, so. No, it's a lot flashier. So these and probably the corn dice are my favorite ones out of all the new ones. Corn? The corn. Chaos. Um, chaos. I'm sorry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the chaos dice are probably my favorite. Maybe because they're just easy to read. Yeah, that's a lot of it. Um, I was really looking forward to the Underworld dice because they were going to be purple, you know, because mm-hmm. they glow and stuff. But I don't know. They got a weird hue to them now that, now that these new Dark Elf dice come out. It's like, okay, I'm using these all the time. That's cool. So, see, the next thing we have the Dwarf pack, card right. pack. And it's your general card pack. We don't go into the details of the cards just because if you want them, you can buy them. So we can do that to the later point. I mean, yeah, point, it's maybe. like half new stuff, kind of, and then half cards you can fill out. We've talked about it in an old podcast before. Yeah. Again, if they, they would dropped just, Boomer's last name. Yeah, it's all that. It's weird. Maybe for stay away from Boomer Esiason since he's ESPN now. I don't know. Well, Does he even work for ESPN still. I don't know who he works for. CBS is the last time I heard. Oh, it was CBS. Okay. Uh, maybe it's just because it's an old um, joke character based off the old quarterback, Boomer Esiason. That yeah. If you were born in 1995 <laughs> and you're 23 now, you would not even know who that really is. So yeah. maybe they just dropped the Esiason part because it was irrelevant. We could give him a new last name <laughs> sooner. Boomer Sooner. Yeah. Uh, you might need to do a tournament with him. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Why have we never thought of that? <laughs> I, I, because he was always Boomer Esiason. That's true. And it kind of sucks. 
man, but now we can do Boomer Bowl, and it makes sense because now he doesn't have a last name. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you can make the fluff work to your advantage. Always. Um, I do like, you know, I'm glad to see, I don't, sadly, I should know the artist who's doing all the artwork for this stuff. No clue. It's not mentioned anywhere that I can remember. No, where I know of. So I don't know if it's a team of guys that are drawing similar or different artists that are drawing the same it's, style. It's the same stuff in the te- Blood Bowl team manager. Mm-hmm. Same style. So whoever that artist is. And the video game. I mean. I'm sure it is like any big company now. They have their in-house people. They do their in-house stuff. And then when you license something, it goes out and you, you're you given pieces of art. Yeah. And then you figure it out from there. Probably so. Anyways, it's nice to see some of the new artwork. I don't know if they really said go design a boomer and or if it was just a nice dwarf to... with a bomb. and Yeah. <clears throat> Flint turn blades bald, so that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. I kind of wish because ev- this does have a uh, Grom Brindle, so that's kind of neat. The white dwarf guy. Yeah, that is neat. It does say see additional special rules. Doesn't say where, and you don't get them without getting the figure, but that's fine. See, that's BS. Morgan Thorg is always with these things. I just wish they would change up his picture every time, just in some little way. Yeah, that but would they be never do. Neat. But like, why like a would little they? humorous thing with yeah. him, like with a dwarf in the background smiling, mm-hmm. or, or him with a dwarf kit on, where Something. it's like he has really short shorts. And <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, it, that's fine. We can't really complain about them not doing additional. So work if that we you want. work for GW, like if you're Jonathan Taylor York and you're listening to both them, which you're not, but if you were, my suggestion is drop those player cards. Drop the price five bucks, and I pick up every one of these. Yeah, I don't even play with these special play cards because special play cards are fine. I think they're cool. I think they're but cool we don't too, need but the match we don't record. Play with them. We don't need the whatever these individual player cards are. Yeah, I mean that's half the pack, and it's all crap. Right, and we've not heard from anybody who uses them. Right, anybody. I love the positional cards, though. Like, yeah. oh, I'm a new guy, and this is my Dark Elf team. That's 100% great. I think those are amazing. Mm-hmm. So we're like almost When there the pictures this. match. Yeah. Dark Elf. <laughs> right. Uh, so we have two new team packs. We have the dice. We have the two pitches. You picked up everything, right? Yeah, I got everything. Uh, you super collector, you. Mm-hmm. Do you feel bad when you open your cards like they're not sealed? I kind of do, but <laughs> it also doesn't matter that much. Why, not... why would you feel bad? Because I'm only going to look at them one time and put them back, pretty much. That's what that's what bothers me. Okay. Now, I would like to get sealed ones just to keep them sealed, so then I could feel fine taking out the star players and putting them in a big deck. So? If anybody has cheap sealed <laughs> decks, <clears throat> let me know. Um, so the new Spike magazine came out, which features Dark Elves, which yeah. is going to be their new thing. And With we, whatever team release, they're going to do dice and a Spike magazine to feature it. Yeah, we basically don't need to talk about the card pack because it's all covered in the. So my point was thing. is the card pack has all the new star players in it, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why the dwarf does not? Meaning. What do you mean? I really like the new Spike Magazine format, which yeah. comes out, features this team, gives you a lot of fluff, gives you the star players, all that stuff. I feel like we got ripped off that we did not get one for dwarves, even humans, orcs, okay, Skaven even. Yeah. Because there's so much to those. And then I look at the card pack and I see like nothing. I guess you get Grum Brindle, which is kind of new, but yeah. it's not kind of new. I don't know. I'm kind of mad that they... <laughs> I love the new format. I just wish they would have started it from the very beginning. Sure. But yeah. they, they didn't know. I get that. Yeah. But I don't know if we'll ever get a oh, Spike magazine featuring dwarves. It'd be kind of neat if they went back and did those. I just hope, like a I hope it's around long issue. enough to do what, like I said, you know, in four years from now, they go, well, we've never done a human Spike magazine, so let's do one and let's do a new team. Mm-hmm. And then they do it. Same thing with dwarves. They have talked about they want to get every team up to 10 star players, so they will need some way to justify that. That's so weird. It is. And 
we can get into that when we get into the magazine because there's a lot of new star players. <laughs> All right. Are we ready to jump into the magazine? Sure. See, overall, the issue is very good. It's awesome that they keep throwing all this fluff at us. To me, out of everything we got Blood Bowl-wise, and have gotten from Blood Bowl since it came back out, mm -hmm. the best value, 100%, is these magazines. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Twelve fifty, right? For I think so. For the magazine, or at least that's what our shop is selling them for. I know mm. the first one was. I don't know if the second one. Well, I'm pretty sure this was twelve fifty. At least that's what the store charged us. Okay. <laughs> um the best value you could possibly get. Oh, no doubt. This is very classy. It wasn't a one hit wonder with the last one. No, you've got you've got really good art. You've got great stories. I almost get mad when people post online like, Do I need to buy that? Is there anything different in there I need? It's like, would you just relax and read the fluff? Yeah. And enjoy the stories. Some people just don't care. I know they and don't. That's their it's prerogative. just a game to them and solely a game. Mm -hmm. And I can't really get mad at that. But they're missing out. Yeah. I, well, duh. That's I mean, I read this and I came home and I gave it to Jennifer. I was like, you really need to read this. This is so far, they're two for two of me reading it and going, man, maybe I should play Dark Elves. Yeah. Or maybe I should play Chaos again. It and definitely I don't helps. like Chaos, mm -hmm. but it made me want to do that. So, all right. So. Let's talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I guess we'll just go straight through it. So the opening cover shows the uh, Nagarth Nightmares. Oh, on the inside? Uh-huh. Yeah. So do you have handy... Yeah, give me your Star Player Companion book really quick. The Blood Bowl Companion book. What did I say? Star Player Companion. <laughs> Isn't that kind of the same different? Well, they're two different books, but yeah, it's basically the same. So I'm looking, oh, boom, I was right. So you know how they have these, which I think is really cool. They show you how oh, a professional painter would paint the new team that comes out. Yeah. And they name all the players, which I think is really cool because if you don't play Blood Bowl and you name your guy you know, Chicken Express or whatever, because you're just not used Tom to naming Brady. plays. <laughs> Tom Brady. You can kind of see the style of Blood Bowl names. Yeah. And you go, oh, that's kind of neat. I didn't think about that. So they have all these names here. Um, one of these guys, the second guy listed, Steve, uh, Pietro Diarvel or whatever. Yeah. He is an old star player kicker from second edition. Oh, cool. Um, and he's also has kick, I believe in the, uh, Nagareth nightmares team that's in there. If you go find that. Ear and lightning's in there too. Exactly. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, he is a. So I don't know if we mentioned this. Ear and Lightning. He's not a star player, though. He's mentioned. He's mentioned. Um, oh, I thought this other guy was in here. I guess he's not. Okay. Um, look in your star player book and go to the Chaos All-Star roster that's near the back. And I think I found another one. I don't so there's know what I'm looking at. What? Okay, right in that section with the Dark Side Cowboys. Keep going, Steve. Scoot over to Chaos All Stars. Okay. Is there a Dark Elf listed there? Oh, Laxon Hurl. Uh huh. Yeah. He is also in a picture here, huh. being part of the Nagarth Nightmares as a lineman. So I think he's a Dark Elf catcher in Second Edition. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, being a Second Edition guy, to see some of these guys. Um, in the book, I think is really cool. Um, well, that's not to mention, you know, Aspirin Thorn. Right. Well, we'll, we'll get, get into there. that as yeah. we go. But um, I, I just thought that was really cool. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, really, 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 really love seeing their star player names and see, like, how far. I don't know. In my brain, you know how people go, like, am I both down improved? Yeah. Anytime I make up a player, I'm thinking like, would this show up in a GW product? Mm -hmm. And of course, I think of second edition GW product, but that's what I think. So we didn't mention this before when we were talking about the team, but this front cover really makes you notice there are female linemen. Yes. So that's really neat that they're just throwing in some females into the game. For sure. I like that. Yeah. I, I like... Um, I wish they'd kind of do that with almost all the races in some ways. Yeah. But this is probably coming from a father with two girls who sure. can tell his girls that you can do anything in life. So 
Meaning 15 years ago, if this came out, oh, absolutely. It might not, I might not care either way. So. Yeah. But I'm I, th- I don't have girls. I think it's cool. Um, so then we have a big article that goes on to the um, Dark Elves. Just talking. Fluff. Oh, and guest editor is Mally Keith. Yeah, like Malachi. The, mm-hmm. the, the guy. guy. Yeah. Uh, a couple pages of breaks down positions just with fluff and stuff. And then they go into the famous Dark Elf teams. Um, there's some new ones here that I've never even heard of. But um, as a guy who wants to name his team and goes on like you know the maps and looks at like regions mm-hmm. and then goes looks up those regions on like Warhammer Lexicon <laughs> right. to find out if there's creatures in the area so I can be called the the you know car and car harpies. Mm-hmm. This stuff's pretty accurate. Yeah. So I was really happy to see that. Um, I thought the Black Ark Corsairs are cool. Yeah, they totally because sold the your Black r- Black Phoenix Ravagers. Ravagers yeah. Well, the, sort I of. think they're both down fans. I'm sure they are. Why wouldn't they be? <laughs> uh, you know, they talk about Dark Side Cowboys, the Executioners from uh, Horror Ganeth, which I thought was really cool because in the past that's what my Dark Elf team was going to be named. Right. The Horror Ganeth Executioners. So, really neat stuff. Then they break down. Uh, Got your team roster and your team star, player and star player references. So, Aspirin Thorn is back, which was a second edition. Dark side cowboy, star player, catcher. Now, he or she is a thrower. They mention he multiple times, but the if you artwork, look at the art, it looks like a she. And they mention. Although I think. That, I don't know. That he dresses up sometimes as another elf. Yeah, they. So let me get to that page real quick. I think we have our first official transgendered Blood Bowl player. It's and possible. I think that's cool. That's fine. So in the Aspirin Thorn spotlight, it mentions that he trains with Elf Union and has even been rumored to play for the occasional high elf team, hiding his identity behind heavy makeup and a blonde wig. So what would that mean? They are implying that he dresses up as Soren Hightower. And their stats are very close. So what is he, Aspirin Uh, Thorn? Aspirin Thorn is 6348. Which is the exact same as Soren Hightower. Um, has but he's 160. Hightower is 180. And then Loner, pass, safe throw. So Soren has Loner, fend, kickoff, return, pass, safe throw, strong hands, strong, uh, sure hands, and strong arm. Okay. Uh, Aspen Thorne has Hail Mary, pass, kickoff, return, Loner, pass, safe throw, sure hands. So a lot of similar skills there, too. Yeah, basically, fend and strong arm for Soren. Well, I got uh, Hail Mary Pass with Aspirin Thorn. Yeah. So So it's very interesting. I don't know why they would do that, but... Um, so you still have uh, Eldril Sidewinder. And then you have Elijah Doom, which was one of my favorite players from 2nd Edition because I loved the name, who was just a experienced lineman back in the old Chaos... Or 2nd Edition... Uh, Dark Side Cowboys days. Well, he really is still just that. Because they mention in his fluff that he's a lineman, and his stats are total lineman stats. But, six, three, four, nine. But they're amazing. Oh, yeah. Loner, fend, guard, stand firm, and wrestle for 190. Yes. That is a great just, I'm going to stand here and mess you up. Oh, I can't wait to, when I play Dark Elves again, I'm going to try to fit take this to a tournament and play with him as a star player. Is he worth it, though? No, probably not. I mean, he, it's nice skills, but are you going to pay that much to get someone like that? I love Elijah that? Doom. I the, get that. The junior high kid in me wants to play with Elijah Doom. <laughs> um, then we have uh, Horkon, Horkon, Hubris, the new guy, who looks really cool, Kiroth, Crack, and I. I actually really like this. At first, I was like, why do we have to have this in there? And then I thought, this is actually really cool. Yeah. And he's, I mean, you, look, you read the fluff, and he's basically someone who went to the undersea sea elves stadiums. Mm-hmm. And he's he has a mask. Mutation, which I guess is. It's not mutation, it's a mask. It's the mask that gives him the mutation skills. Yes, the mutation skills, yes. So it's like a, to me, it's like a magical artifact that he wears yeah. that gives him these things. So he's 170. Seven three four eight, loner, disturbing presence, foul appearance, pass block, tackle, and tentacles. 
Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Tentacles with three strength, not amazing, but still annoying. It's enough that you have to make the dice roll, and if you flub it, you're going to be pissed. Yeah, and with pass block and tackle, you can really get in there and mess people up. That is going to be really... You're just never going to throw it to that side of the field, because if he can get over there through pass block, then you have to not just dodge from him. You have to make that ta- that tentacles yeah. roll. So, yeah, I think it's pretty interesting. And um, apparently there is an old Warhammer figure that has the same look to him. Well, why did you tell everybody that before we had one? You uh, probably already bought one, didn't I you? I have not. Oh, okay. So now everybody's going to be out there getting one. Yeah. Probably. I'll, I'll be all jelly. Other people have already bought them. Oh, I've okay. seen. Oh, really? I assume that if they're making new star players, they'll eventually have new models for these players. Eventually. And they'll be Forge World. So we have, uh, am I saying that right, Mordrix Hex? believe so. Which is a new dark elf female witch elf, I guess. It's a witch elf? Yeah. Um, yeah, they mentioned that in the flow. And the rival of Dark Santa... Uh, Roxanne and Dark Nail. Ro- Roxanne and Dark Nail. So, I kind of like that. So, she's 230-7347. Loner, block, dauntless, dodge, fend, frenzy, and mighty blow. Mm-hmm. So... She's more, really good. More violent and less agilic. Yeah. But... Pretty neat. Um, of course, you got Morgan Thor, Roxana, and then what they're calling a Golden Era star player, Jeremiah Cool, which was in second edition. You would read about the Dark Side Cowboys and Hubris Rakarth and all this, and like he was the you know the next guy to fill in Jeremiah Cool's shoes. Mm-hmm. And I remember as a kid reading all this, it's like I wonder how good Jeremiah Cool's stats was. I bet he had this, and I bet he had that. And, of course, we tried to make him up through yeah. second edition stuff and how badass he would be. Now we get to play with him. So I think this is really cool, too. Yeah, He's we'll, super expensive. We'll go into that more of the last segment. Right. Because we'll talk about other ones we want to see and stuff. But um, he's super expensive. He's like three uh, 390 I mean, you get a lot. Oh, so yeah. He's like absolutely. Eight, three, five, eight, block, dodge, dive, and catch, dump off, uh, kickoff, return, loner, nerves of steel, pass, sidestep. So he's supposed to be the guy who kind of like created the option game for Dark Elves. Yeah. And when you the read the fluff option. in this, it really goes into yeah. that. So I really think it's really cool to bring him back a little bit of Blood Bowl from a lot of additions. And the new stuff they've given us so far has actually been really... I can't complain. No, it's really tied to the fluff. um, So What we're missing... Yeah. And you pointed it out right before we started, and I I was going to point it out to you on the podcast, is Ithaca Benoin. Yeah, it's odd. So if you don't know, Ithaca Benoin, we assume that's how you say his last name, uh, could play for Dark Elf or Camry. It was 220-7337, Loner... Accurate, dump off, nerves of steel, pass, regen, and sure hands. So he's like an undead thrower. Right. So he died, and he still had the elf attributes, yeah. and that's why he could play with Dark Elf and Kimry and stuff. What I find interesting about him, and always did with 3rd edition, or whenever this elf became a star player, yeah. is I was always like, why him? Why him? And I kept always saying, why him? Mm-hmm. Because in second edition, he was just an experienced Dark Elf thrower. Yeah. He wasn't a star player. He wasn't anything special. And I was just always curious why he became like a star player later in life. So. And not players like Aspirin Thorn and stuff who now are back in Blood Bowl. I guess we can. I might as well mention this now because I find it interesting. And I, something I wish they would have done. In the fluff. Later on, when we're talking about Roxana, it mentions that Roxana killed Dolphar Longstride, which is okay. But if they would have just changed that to she killed Ithaca Benoin, it would have fit perfectly. Because then he's dead, so either he doesn't play anymore. Or so he comes back and plays with the undead teams. Or he comes back and plays with the undead teams. One little change, because I don't know why they just threw him under the bus like that. Dolphar? Well, yeah. one, they might be getting rid of him totally. They probably are. He kind of sucks. But, remember, star players have their own 
fluff-wise. They have their sure. own personal apothecaries. That way they can die in your game. Yeah. And then you can see them playing on the field the next game. Right. So Zug's personal apothecary saved him. But if you're going to throw something in there and you're going to use a star player, I just don't get why you don't use the one that isn't being used anymore. I agree with that. So I don't know. The I would like to know the reasoning behind all that. Could be an editing mistake. It could be both. Possible. Don't could know. be they don't care. Could be they want you to show interest. So eventually when they do high elves or what else, yeah. you can look at um, Dolphar or Longstride and go, oh. They could be bringing another. Back in second edition, there was a couple of different um, Dark Elf kickers. So they could be bringing one of those back instead of Dolphar. That's possible. But um, it makes me want to play with Dolphar now before he's totally gone <laughs> forever, if that's possible. Uh, also, if you're bringing new people into the game and new players or new star players, why not bring back Tur and Red Venom? He was I, the coolest guy. I don't know. He it's, had his own model. It was a, Maybe that's why, because he has his own model. They want people to buy new ones. That's dumb. But it's possible. Don't know. Um, it just bugged me. I mean, because I, I thought him. the same thing. Because as much as I liked the name Elijah Doom, and loved him back in Second Edition, um, yeah, I thought of the same thing. Why not term Red Venom? Yeah. I mean, you already had some history that he's a star player, and but I don't know. We don't know. I mean, for all we know, though, Steve, some of those guys could come back because there's a lot of these star players here. That can play for High Elves or Wood Elves or Elf Union, uh, which I think is kind of cool. Right. Because, if anything, this book, reading this magazine, made me feel like there's really only one Elf race, just many factions, if that makes sense. Well... Yes, because there really is only... Elf is a race, and there's I know subsections. That, but after you hear Dark Elf, Wood Elf, High Elf, yeah. Elf for so long, I don't know, this book, reading it made me go like, oh yeah, they're really all just one people who bicker amongst themselves. Right. Like people of Earth. And, you know... But they have... There's not much difference between them. Well, it's been it's been long enough that they've changed enough. <laughs> I think the star players show though that they're all yeah they're all elves they'll play anywhere for money yeah so or at least some of them will so maybe we get some of those maybe term red venom comes back and he doesn't play for dark elves he plays for other teams I don't know yeah I don't know maybe I there's just... gonna be a chaos packed team and he's saved for that star player wise maybe or chaos renegades yeah. I should say I just love that model I just, I, that I was my too. only problem I I because he had the full mask and just the big long the more and more thing. i see this i'm almost to i don't want them to have infinite amount of star players but then there's part of me it's like why t why cap it at 10 why don't we just do 15 or something but so the capping at 10 is interesting because technically this is nine because you have jeremiah cool who's one of the golden age who are pretty much optional which we can get into later but i just thought that was interesting um, so then the pages on page seven, we have the chat with a rat segment, which is a little fluffy thing. Where yeah. It interviews dark elves. Then we go into a team, uh, spotlight of the Nagareth night wings, which I'm glad they didn't just erase from the history mm -hmm. because they started off as the Nagareth night wings and then became the Nagareth nightmares. Later yeah. And the third edition. It's so. really cool how they explain the reasoning behind that and how the two teams came together. Um, you have a hall of fame squad, which I really like, and at the same time, I don't really like. Why is that? So the first Hall of Fame squads we got kind of were like you could play out of the box, if I remember right. Oh, yeah. And they That's all true. matched up to a certain yeah. team value. Is this close to that from what you remember? Uh, I think they were all 2 million. Were they all 2 million? I thought okay, so. Okay, then this is close, so I shouldn't complain. Um. I thought this was overly high compared to what those were, but maybe it's not. It's been a while. I'd have to go back and look, but I'm pretty sure they're all two million. Um, you can still play right out of the box with these. It looks like there's 12 characters. I do love the fact that they keep including Hall of Fame squads. Yeah, I, I do like those I wish there was more than one. So, like, if you wanted to play the Dark Side Cowboys, you could. And if you wanted to play the Nagaris Night Wings, you could. Yeah. And if you wanted to play, you know, Khan's Killers, you could. But... 
But realistically, no one plays those. So then we have uh, player spotlights of Jeremiah Cool, the Flashing Blade. Glad they kept his nickname. Yeah, very cool. Um, and they give his career highlights after that. So here they explain golden era star players. We'll get into that last segment. We're just going to do Wait, save it? Okay. We'll save that. We got career highlights of him. And then we go to Dirt from the Dugout, which is another like fluffy. I like that we got some new artwork in these, or at least from what I can tell. Yeah, definitely. Again, it might be from that same studio that makes everything, like you were saying. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's the in, in studio people, I'm sure. Uh, but it's really nice. Then we have another player spotlight of Roxana Darknail. And uh, I never thought about the witch elves being like witches. Right. I mean, I have, but not like in the fact that they make sacrifices to stay young. Mm-hmm. Never really thought of that. I yeah. don't know why. Never. I mean, never really came up. So maybe because my brain still wants it to be more comical blood bowl than mm-hmm. super violent blood bowl, even though it's super violent, and yet it's not as violent as it used to be. <laughs> That's what's funny. Uh, then we go to Aspirin Thorn, who's now a star player thrower, and I still think from the artwork looks like a female. So I'm just going to accept, not accept, I'm going to happily pronounce that he's our first transgendered Blood Bowl player. I think it's interesting. Now, it does mention that he is um, equal, many say, of his hated counterpart, Valen Swift. Didn't Valen Swift used to be a star player? No. I mean, he was in second edition, never in like third edition. Okay. Not until they brought back the Swift tunes. Oh, that's right. That's where I'm thinking. We got Soren Hightower, yeah. which was the second thrower on the old You're right. Elfheim Eagles team. I was like, I know that's a star player. I couldn't, but it wasn't in the list. But yeah, yeah like the Swift wins. Valen went on and like financed and coached his own team, the Swifts yeah. and stuff like that. Okay. Fluff, so. And Anyways, he's back now, so that's so we, why. We, we got Aspirin Thorn, which is really cool. Um, so we've got... We, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I believe this is written by Joe Manji. Right. Um, Joe Manji his... the Terrible. I know. What's his real name? Joe... Um, Something. <laughs> Manji. <laughs> Joe Manji. <laughs> oh, gosh. I know his last name. Anyways. Now I can't think of it. Um, anyways, so, uh, yeah, a really a... good Blood Bowl player who knows what he's talking about. These are actually pretty good. Like, yeah. if you were new, these are some kind of helpful pointers. I don't... I... I like and dislike that the introduction is called Cruel in the Gang because it's a really good pun name but there's going to be so many dumb name teams named that. Oh. That's what I thought too. But at the same time, it's better than a lot of their pun names. Oh yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I will say this though. The, <laughs> the first the glaring time ex- <laughs> mistake I've seen in this book is, is they show you a setup and a picture of it and it's not even a proper setup. There's yeah. only two people on the line. Yeah, it seems odd. There's two people on the line in the middle, I guess I should say. When no, on the line scrimmage. On the scrimmage, there yeah. should be three. So whoever edited missed that one. Yeah, I don't get why that's the case. Or I don't know. I didn't really read all of this yet because it's strategy, and I don't like strategy. Um, I suck. Blood Bowl strategy reading it, you don't, you don't learn as much as if you play. Yeah. I mean... I will eventually read all this. I think this is some good pointers for people that's like, I've never played this team. I'm going to a tournament. So I think this is really good stuff. Um, So keep up the good work on these articles with that. Um, None of the other pictures are are wrong. Just that very first one that you see. So Uh, then we got another player spotlight with Hubris Ricarth. And then goes into the legend of Hubris, who's taking over for Jeremiah Cool. Um, with the Dark Side Cowboys. And then career highlights of him as well. And then lesser known Dark Elf star players. They give you a, a brief, fluffy, they don't get the whole page. They get like a couple paragraphs. Which I'm actually, in some ways, I like these a little bit better than the three pages dedicated to one star player. Yeah. We don't need that for everybody. <laughs> so these are pretty cool. You find out, like I said, here, I said earlier that Mordrix Hex is like the rival of Dark. Roxanne and Dark now. So mm-hmm. I, I really enjoyed that part. And then we get some new rules only found in this book. You want to talk sure. about the new inducements? Yeah. So the new inducements they have are pretty cool for me. And we've mentioned it before. But we never did it for ourselves. 
it's essentially you can induce a coach or a cheerleader for the game at 20,000 gold pieces. So before this, if you had less than 50, you were just SOL because right. there was nothing under 50. And 20 makes sense because you can buy one for your team for 10. Does so, it make sense? Yeah. I think they should be priced at 30, but I have no reason to back that. Yeah, I don't get that. I think if you, there's 20... 20k there, in gold difference between my team and your team. Yeah, let it be. Move on. You're pretty but much even. I can understand that. I'm not complaining. I think this is good. Yeah, because now people can't bitch that I didn't get to spend 40k. And realistically, these don't come into play too often. They don't. So you get to spend your money, and it's fine. Does it say how many you can buy? No, it says unlimited. So if you want to take 800 of them, I guess you could. And then uh, we get a weather mage. Did you see that? Yeah. For 30,000 gold pieces? Yeah, I forgot. That, and anybody can take that, which is interesting. Yeah, would you take it? If I had less than 50, sure. So for the Weather Mage, it can be used once per game at the start of your team's turn before any player takes an action. Roll on the weather table, modifying the result by either plus or minus one or two. The resulting effects last until the start of your next turn, replacing the existing weather conditions. At the start of your next turn, the replaced weather conditions will return. I dislike this. I think it's an interesting thing, and I'm okay with the functionality of it, but weather is such a random and doesn't happen that often mm -hmm. that it would suck if I was playing against a Camry team or something and got, or play against an elf team, team or Skaven team with all the movement and you get a blizzard and you're like sweet that's going to slow them down a little bit and then they're just like oh well let's just forget the blizzard and we can do whatever I dislike that what do you mean they can say let's forget the blizzard because you get a re-roll I thought it was the weather mage maybe at the beginning of your turn game. you roll a weather result uh -huh. and you can subtract or add one or two yeah, so just temporarily for like one play, you can make the weather drive. whatever you want. Is it drive? Replacing the existing weather conditions at the start of your oh. next turn. Oh, turn. Oh, my turn. bad. Sorry, sorry. It oh. sounds like okay. Well, I yeah, can that's, play it. I only it's read that five rainy. times. Yeah. I changed the weather to rainy. Okay. It's rainy for your turn. No, we're I fine. I assume it's rainy for my turn, and then it's back to normal. Yeah. So, yes, I'm an idiot. No, it's okay. I've read that multiple times. I'm just like, I don't like this. But yeah, for one it turn, is, that's it fine. It is cheap. It's very cheap. And not going to come into play that often, yeah. realistically. Right. I just don't know if I would... I don't know if I would take the chance if I had 30k to spend and just buy a cheerleader. Because you know you're at least going to get two kickoffs versus to roll here. I don't know. Well... It, it'd be interesting. It, it's definitely different... And unique, so kudos to that. Now, and it doesn't seem overpowered. Do Because they said this is during the pre-match sequence of league play and exhibition. When do you roll the weather? After or before the pre-match sequence? I would assume after. It says what now? Note that if the No, drive, any team I hire uh, inducement as an inducement the during the pre-match sequence or league, of league play and ex exhibition matches. It's not a wizard inducement, though. Well, no. What I'm saying is, what am when I is the weather rolled? Before you buy this or after? Um, because if you knew what the weather was before you bought this, it could be important. But buying this without knowing what the weather is... But you still got to re-roll the dice when you use this thing. Uh, yeah, but if, you, if it was a blizzard that was rolled, you might take this if you need to pick up the ball one turn. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I don't know. I'd have to look or it Or rain up. or whatever. All right. Also, the next one is called, what is this? Is so, it, it Druchi? Yeah, see, this is another thing I was going to mention. They, throughout this whole thing, call them, I assume, Drukai. Drukai? That's what I would say, because Druchi sounds stupid. Well, that's why I want to say Druchi. Yeah, it's like if you combine Drew Bucciconi's name together and just called him Druchi. I thought these were all named after and designed... After Drew Bucciconi, because he's really angelic. So we're going to make a whole team based off of Drucci's? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I assume it's Drew Kai, and I 
don't know where that came from. I would like somebody. I think it comes from the old fluff. I no, I think when they did Age of Sigmar, oh. they renamed all the races. So okay. you don't have dwarves, you have like dwarven yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. So they can copyright stuff. Right. So I'm assuming that's what this comes from. Okay. I also know in like D and D, aren't the dark elves called something different than regular elves? Drow. Drow. Okay. Yeah. So I like that they included this actually in here. Sure. Um, but I want to know what it is. Is it Druchi? Is it Druchai? What is it? Somebody let us know. I'm not saying Druchi. It's, it's got to be Druchai. Druchai. I like Druchai a lot better. I just got to reset my brain. So, so, yeah, they have Wizard, which allows them to do a Thunderbolt, which has been done before. It's called a Druchai, Druchai Sports Sorceress. All right, because it's a woman. Oh, okay. Saying. Yeah. But it does count as a Wizard Inducement. But they have one spell that's called 1,000 Cuts. Cast at the start of any of your opponent's turns before any player performs an action. Target any opposing player. On a 3+, plus, that player's move, strength, and agility are reduced by 1. The spell lasts until the end of the drive. So I read this like you read the weather mage yeah like i was like why would you do that for one turn i was like okay i guess you could <laughs> hit somebody lower or... it blitz yeah. him and then move on this is pretty awesome now it's 150 right to induce this person and it's only one drive it's one drive but that one drive can last a long time but if you were playing a tentpole type team or yeah. let's say you were playing my pro elves yeah and you save this wizard for after you go up one nothing, and you know I'm going to feed my one really really good you know um, player war dancer or whatever, yeah. you could cripple a team. Yeah, I mean movement's big, strength's big, and agility's big. Yeah, I can you do to stars. I don't and know. And I guess it doesn't go to one movement or zero movement because nothing goes below one. Yeah, but. Do it just not like just automatically. Kill oh, it. I guess it would go down to one movement instead of two. Yeah, God, that'd be terrible. Are there any? Th- you could do it to mummies. Are there any three movement people? Um, because you could make them have to roll yeah, when mummies. they stand up. Mummies. Oh, okay, that's what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Duh. Sorry. That's interesting. It's pretty interesting. It's a, have to knock it's them a down. lot. It's yeah. a lot, and it's one drive. So if you could maximize this, if you could take this to a tournament. I think that would be bigger there. 150, though. Yeah, but... I can't see spending that in a tournament. If you were taking a halfling team and you had nothing else to spend your money on... There I could, yeah. <laughs> okay, good point. I mean, for stunty teams as well, yeah. I, I see it. Yeah, I could see that. It's weird. It's interesting. It's unique. I like it. All right, so then we are into the final three pages of the book, which is always a delight. We have some Pete Nifton... And I believe Nick Kime's still writing this, or it was probably. I don't um, know. Um, got little, Bob uh, in an afro. Uh huh. We got a little old school comic mm-hmm. story, um, tale of Old Blood Bowl with Bob Bifford, and of course you always have the vampire Jim it. showing up at the end. I kind of like that. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to work every story where Jim's like on the <laughs> last three panels <laughs> doing something silly, but so far it's worked out really good. Yeah. So. I don't know if that's the writer, if that's Pete doing it, or both, but kudos to you guys. I really wish they would either color this or make it straight black and white instead of this weathered look with yeah. white word bubbles. I don't like the white word bubbles. No, just make it all weathered. The white word bubbles on the weathered, like... Parchment look. Parchment look makes it look cheap. Yeah, it does. But I do like the parchment feel of it, making it look old. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Just don't do that with the word bubbles. Yeah, I agree. It makes it look cheap. So This looks odd. It looks pasted on. It looks like they cut these out and pasted yeah. them on. Like a project at home. But good stuff. Um, of course, friends with Pete Nifton. So, and We're biased. <laughs> very biased. More, more, more than friends. I've, you know, I love his work every, for the last 30 years. So uh, it doesn't change. So really neat stuff. I, I actually just wish there was more. I wish we could have like an eight-page comic. Oh, sure. Yeah. Because it's also hard to do a story in three pages. Very hard. hard. If they, I heard someone complaining about it. And I'm like, well, 
look, it's still just three pages. There's not much you can do. Complaining that it's too short or well, they don't want it in there. It's too hard to figure out what was going on because you got to try to scree- squeeze everything in to those three pages. If they would let them breathe and give them six pages. Sure. Or anything. Matter of fact, I'll pay, make this $15 and give them, what is an, an extra layout of another four pages or something, yeah. you know. I'd be fine with that. But then they got to pay the artist and sure. everything. But good overall magazine. I don't know why you would not want this. I don't either. It's the best part of the whole release, like you said. By, I will say. By far the best part. Uh, one thing I thought was really cool in the fluff that I forgot to mention. They imply that, I guess not really imply, they just flat out state that the Blitzers get cold one slime to put on their body to make them immune to harm so that's why they have the higher armor i like that too but at the same time i was like does that mean the linemen do it yeah i'm guessing so yeah. everybody i'm not gonna nitpick it i think I the just blitzers enjoyed the fact that yeah i think it was it explains I, why they have higher armor than the rest of the elves and so I, like you're saying they're all the same race but they have higher armor so why because of the cold one slime. Well, and, you know, it mentioned that they're immune to the pain and stuff. So I thought yeah. it also reflected of them getting, like, skills like Leap and getting into the fray. Oh, okay. To get the ball okay. carrier yeah. and not being afraid to jump into a cage or sense. something like yeah. that. You know, a little bit more crazy because they can be. Sure. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. It was um, a nice little no- nod to stuff. And there's so many nods to second edition in here. I mean, we could we could break this down page by page, and it would take forever. But just all the team names and player names and the history, Jeremiah Cool with the running game. This magazine everything. makes me proud to play Blood Bowl and want to sh- get people into it and show them, look what you could be reading. Mm-hmm. Again, I want to win every game. I want to be a good Blood Bowl player. I want to sit down and people go, oh, crap, I have to play Scott. Yeah. He's really good at Blood Bowl. But I enjoy the fluff stuff and the role-playing aspect even more than winning. Mm-hmm. And winning's pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. So if you haven't picked it up, go ahead and do it. Did you buy two of these? No, I just got one. My fear is, and this is stupid since I'm 44 and probably realistically will only live about 30 more years, is... When I got these second edition books, I read through them so much as a kid that the spines tore and everything yeah, else. Yeah, but those were weakly glued. I mean, I, I know that. So I've been buying two copies of the magazine is what oh, okay. I've been saying. That's okay. You so can get like, Pete Nifton to sign them. I put one at home and then I pour through the other one. Like I've carried this one to work a couple of times. Mm-hmm. I've even dropped it and I didn't even care that some pages got bent because I was yeah. like, I got another one at home. No, I, I, I 100% understand that. So... I'll probably always have buy two as long as they keep making them, and they're twelve fifty. It's great value, man. We need to invest in magazine bags and boards. Wow, I didn't think about that. I might actually eventually do that. Yeah. So my thoughts on these magazines, Steve. Yeah. Wrapping this up, if at the end of the year, like last year, they did the like handbook thing. Yeah. If they put all these magazine stuffs in another handbook and called it Volume Two at the end of the year, would you buy it? Nothing new? Nothing new. Just one place to put it. I don't know. You don't know. Okay. Because the problem, like I bought the handbook because it was really nice and it's nice to have all the rules in the same thing. But for the most part, I don't need these for the rules because realistically, I don't need the other rules. Um, plus, I would assume it'd be 50 bucks or so and have no new content. I go back and forth is why I'm asking you this. With I would, no new content. I don't know if I would because these are, like now you we're, said, they're we're talking new. Quality. I don't know if I'd buy it new. Would I eventually get it? Yes. Okay. I would eventually want it for the collection, but I don't think I'd Do have a Do you think people that wouldn't pick these up would see a hardback and go, eh, 50 bucks, I'll get them all? Not at all. No? No. Not even a, there's no reason to do that. They still need to put out a book with all. A comprehensive thing with all the rules in it. That they do, yes. Speaking of rules, real quick, did you notice this will kind of tie into our next subject when we after the break? I was looking at forward at Chaos Cup mm-hmm. and the team build list that they show. Looks like it's in the same style that GW has. One second. I think it's 
I think I still have it up on my phone. That's why I'm going to show you. Okay, so on the Chaos Cup website, you yeah. can look at the team list. They have all these teams in the same type of format. You know, like the teams are listed in the book. You know, it's DW designed. Do you get what I'm saying? Graphical the, design. It's it's the document I think that links to the DW page. Oh, okay, okay. Got Does you. that make sense? I' pretty sure. I think so. Anyways, they have zero to eight cheerleaders, zero to eight fan factor or, or coaches, zero to eight fan factor. I think as well. Okay. Is there anywhere in the rules that say you're limited to only eight cheerleaders? eight assistant coaches or is this maybe a document somebody made up that looks close to the gw document i don't know i'm trying to think back but i maybe okay because i i can't imagine i I, don't know i just thought it was interesting yeah anyways i shouldn't even brought it up no probably not (laughs) that's fine all right we're gonna take a quick break and we will be back with some tournament talk And now for our second segment, it's more tournament talk with Stephen Scott. Hello, Scott. <laughs> this is NPR style. Should we do the whole segment like this or should we maybe get a little bit louder like this? No, I don't know, really. We're going to now it's kind of devolving into ASMR videos. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was kind of hoping you would just stick with it and we would try to get through the whole segment like that. But no. Maybe we'll say that for like an April Fool's type month. Although I just gave it away. So maybe we'll just yeah. ruin your life on yeah, like we'll, Christmas. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> In December. Uh, so we got some tournament talk. So if you don't know, because this is your very first podcast and you've already listened to probably an hour and a half of rambling. Which we tend to do. But it was important, Rambling. Um, Steve is also on another podcast that him and Drew did not invite me and in Chance to. Nope. Um, so it's called the World Cup Report. Report. And if you are going to the World Cup, if you search a for year it, plus do World now. Cup Report Blood Bowl because there's a lot of World Cup stuff right now. Oh, obviously I didn't think yeah. about that. So <laughs> it gets a little lost. Look for the little pear that looks the little prickly pear that looks like a little prickly nut sack. It does kind of. Well, that's the first thing Jennifer said. When it was cut off on the Facebook post, it did kind of look like that. (laughs) Um, So we just wanted you guys to be aware that there is a podcast out there. You guys are now going over... We're going through teams. Kind of like what teams this is really good for this team. This tournament's not so good for this team. Last one was Chaos. Next up is Chaos Dwarves. So just kind of in alphabetical order, I assume. Yeah, we should... We're going through alphabetical order, and then we should be interviewing some other people, like on Rural Committee and Dorn Burn Committee. Good. But... It's been kind of up in the air with the whole move stuff. Sure. And we're still, what, a year and two months away, three months away? But it's still going to creep up before people know. Yeah. So if you're planning on going to World Cup, you know, start saving your money or start looking to do that because I I guess getting a passport is really hard. No, it's not that hard. Time consuming. Yeah. Pain in the butt. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I can go. And you weren't invited because you weren't going at the time. I know. I'm just giving you a hard time. But just hush. I know, but... No, I wasn't are invited. You no. thinking of going now? Here's the deal. Steve wanted me to commit Yeah. a long time ago to something that I figured what has happened in our lives today yeah. was going to happen some point this year. Because not only did I know Jennifer ready to move in and buy a house, you told me about a year before that, like... One day I'm out of here, dude. If you hadn't lost your job, I would have been gone beforehand. See? But, yeah. It worked out best because you didn't have to be on your own for a while. Yeah. Dealing with I'm just saying I'm not... No, no, I understand. I should have gave you the, sure, I'm going, there you even go. though it was 90%. And 90, then, well... But now if I want to go, I have to kick somebody off of the team or sit out. And or I'm not we make do... changes to the team, which well, is possible. It, it doesn't matter. Anyways. We're not going to worry about nobody that until we know... Well, um, but Drew and Steve are doing a good job over there, so check into that and give it a listen. And just like this podcast, give it a rating and review. Yeah, nobody, mine showed up. Nobody yet. does that anymore. I know, but we missed the boat on that. Back in the early years of the iPad, I, iTunes, people cared. They don't care now. No, it's just too easy. To leave. Too easy to get access to stuff. Right. Well, I put up a review, but I haven't seen it yet. Cool. 
So I don't know if it, maybe this thing of they never show up is true. That is possible. <laughs> um, what other tournament stuff? Chaos Cup registration is now officially open. Yep. So if you're going to go to Chaos Cup, and get on over there. I think we are 95% going. 90. I'm, it's less than 100 now. I would say <laughs> I'm 99% sure. Sure. At okay. this point. Because um, we both have, you know, expenses and everything, but. I would probably know better in like two weeks. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, it didn't help that I got a speeding ticket. So like that ate some <laughs> of I, You know, I finally got caught speeding. Yeah. Dude. And I didn't even deserve it. That's... I mean, I deserved it because I was speeding. But I was going with the flow of traffic. Right. You know how many times in my life I've just been out on my own speeding and never got caught? Yeah. Sucks. It happens that way. Ugh, so mad. I was like, I'm going with a pile of cars. No, I'm... <laughs> I'm like 99% sure now. Okay. I really want Jennifer to go to experience it just yeah. in case we never get to go again. Because you just, I know I say that every year, yeah. but you just don't know. Because like I talked to uh, Jonas and him and the Swedes are not coming this year. That sucks. And he just said, you know, life and time. I don't, he said, I think those trips are out of the foreseeable future right now. Yeah. And he's like, it's just, you know, which life mean, and time. Which is why we've got to go over there. I'd love to go over there. So speaking of this, somebody needs to throw a tournament, not next year because we got World Cup, but maybe the year after that, like a big tournament in Iceland where we can get all the <sighs> European people to go. Mark Perry's already made dice. Probably has. <laughs> um, he just heard this. He made dice. We haven't even po- <laughs> broadcast it yet, but he's already heard it and made dice. Anyways, do a tournament in Iceland. It's like 400 bucks. Or if we go to Chicago Why and fly out. Why are you telling everybody this secret? Now they're going to raise the prices. Well, it's not a secret. It, and Iceland's going to like give us free passes because they said we heard everybody heard this on both. But now. it's a hub, so we right. can get there cheap, and that's easier for us to get to. We had a local guy, Michael Grubb, go to Iceland, and he said it was amazing. Yeah, that's how I heard about it. Because I'm like, why did you go there? He goes, well, it's super cheap. Yeah. And I was like, really? And I look into it, I'm like, it's really super cheap. So we need a tournament in Iceland. Yeah. I don't know... How many Blood Bowl people there are in Iceland? Probably not many, but maybe a few. Because we know the Swedes. Aren't they all named the same? Aren't there Which, like 10 names you can name your children in Iceland? Mm, probably less. No. Probably more, but I'm not positive. Isn't that the place where you can only name your kids? The special, certain, yeah. That's, There's something to it. Yeah. But I think they have names outside of that, too. Okay. I'm not positive. Right. Iceland, we don't know your culture. <laughs> You're a volcano island, so yes. we don't know anything about you. Other than that, so tournament, one of the reasons we're doing this Aren't is... Aren't all islands volcanoes? Kind well, of. yeah, but I guess. No, pretty much everything we're on. Well, at something one point broke off volcanic. at some point. Yeah, so. All right. Yeah, anyways. Um, it has come up again, and I believe we've touched on this before, about an organizer playing in their own tournament and winning said tournament. And we had a couple of people mention that they would like our opinions. And so I'm, I'm pretty sure we try to. I was like, like I'm pretty sure we talked about this before, but I don't know yeah. if we did a whole segment or went deep into it. And so we're just going to cover it briefly here. The thing was, is somebody posted, you know, like um, here's the tournament results. I won the tournament. Um, you know, I offered first place to the second place guy, but he didn't want it because right. he wanted to earn it. And and also on Nufflecast, which actually put out an episode, surprisingly. Right. Uh, Grant and Tristan were talking, and I believe Grant ran a tournament, won it. played in the tournament, won it, but let Tristan take the prize. Now, part of that was because he made the trophies, so he didn't want something that he made. Sure. So, but in that situation, and I bring this up because in the system, he Grant will go as first place. In the NAF, in the GLAM rankings, in all that, he goes as first. So then Tristan got the first place trophy, but and he was said he won, but he doesn't get any other benefits of it, I don't think. So, so there's a lot of ways to handle this. So that came up, the Facebook thing came up, and I mentioned on the Facebook post, like, you know, if you're going to play in your own tournament, just take the prize. Yeah. 
I, I, this goes back to hero clicks. Back when we used to run hero clicks, mm-hmm. we would you know build teams, and some people would say you know we were the odd man out in the hero click tournaments. And I will and preface this by that is a big difference because Scott and I got into a big argument about that at the time, right? Because when he would play odd man out, he was in it to win it. He's, right. he's there. I would bring a tournament that was or a team. All right, I'm sorry, a team that had the possibility of winning a tournament. Yeah. I wasn't just going to sandbag. Now, Steve would bring a team that he knew he had no chance of winning. Or I would still bring a, a competitive team because people would, but I would play the guy that had the buy and he would still get the win. And I would just only play the buy person. Right. You would occupy his time yeah. no matter what. You would fill out the, the tournament and actually play in it. Correct. I was playing the person who had the buy just, and if they chose to play me, if they lose, they get a loss, right? Etc. So that's we a little just bit had different. two different mentalities, and this has come up a lot. And somebody asked in this thing, you know, what's the etiquette? And somebody said, like, at some tournaments, the TO, if they play, they play a lower tier team, or yeah. they play with a crazy star player, you know, just trying, trying to be goofy. But if they win, they win. I'm on the mentality of, if you run a tournament, and you don't have the help. One, you don't have a guy that can just sit around and help you to right. be the odd man out. Like, we're lucky that we have that. Oh, absolutely. Or or in the case that we don't have a lot of people, so we both go ahead and play. Mm-hmm. But usually what the caveat is, is I'm the designated odd man out, or you're the designated odd man out. And this came up at Oklahoma Bowl two years ago, I think, or maybe three, when it was even number, but people were like, you guys should play. And we both were like, well, yeah, we're like just going to sit ago. out. And they're like, no, it's cool. But we asked, like, hey, does anyone have a problem with us playing? Because if we play and we win, we're taking it. Right. That's just how it's going to work. Right. So that is our opinion, is if you play, you're playing to actually play. So there was, there was a gentleman, long story short, a gentleman who was from the Florida area. He said that everybody's kind of new there. We kind of mm-hmm. want to know the etiquette. And uh, I believe it's Phil who goes by Purple Goo yeah. online. He just said, you know... His answer was like, there's not really an etiquette. It's just a style. And somebody mentioned like, I think it was Nate Beam mentioned something about Zlurpcast at one point. If they won their own tournament, they just didn't take any prizes. They basically just skipped over them, which I don't remember that to be true or not. So I might be misquoting him. Yeah. Or doing what Grant did, which is just skip over himself. Yeah. I'm of the mentality, if you're going to play, just play. Yeah. And if you want to play halflings, play halflings. But don't later mention, like, well, he only beat me because I was playing a slub team. No. Or, you know, just... There you, have been... You, you can try different things. You can try the mentality of, I'm going to play with humans, and I'm going to take I'm gonna take two-star players and yeah. have all linemen. And if I win, I win. If I don't, I don't. I don't care what you do, as long as you make up your roster before you check other people's rosters. That's the big deal. Because if you're... You don't metagame this. You see that there's eight Amazon teams coming, and then you go, well, I haven't played Dwarves in a while. It's exactly. a good time to do it. Don't do that. No, that's because bullshit. we don't check rosters, because Steve and Steve will jump on me, like, have you started checking rosters? And it's like, well, I haven't decided my roster yet. Well, dude... Yeah. Make your roster so you can start checking rosters. Yeah, it's the big deal. And it's a it's a huge deal. And I want to win my own tournaments. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie. I think it'd be great if I won Oracle Bowl. Sure. <laughs> it's a big tournament. It'd be amazing. Now. But at the same time, I don't want to have an edge to do so. So therefore, if you play in your tournaments, play in your tournaments. But don't do what the original poster did, which is I offered him first place, but he didn't want it. To me, that was I would have taken that as you saying, Scott, you weren't good enough to win first, but do you still want it? It's a little self-serving. You've never got a first place before. How mm-hmm. about I let you have one now? Don't do that. No. Either bail out of the tournament, play a lesser team, or just accept your award. Yeah. Hey, I, hey, I had a great tournament turnout. I played some really competitive guys. I got, I kind of got lucky in game three, and I won my tournament. Yeah. No big deal. Now, so. I would say specifically for our situations you do not put yourself in for any drawings or we never do that if um if you are at a tournament where first place gets first pick of the prizes you don't take anything sure because as the person running it you're not there to get a prize we never have done that though no i'm just saying in 
in Usually general. we pick last, and truth be known, we take the prize and we put it right back in the prize pool to recycle For it. the most part, yeah. And usually if we win things at other tournaments, we do the same thing. We take those prizes yeah. and put them back into our own tournament. Absolutely. So, Unless well, it's something I want. Guy from you guys. Florida, do whatever you feel is right. If your player base doesn't like you playing in your tournament, get a buddy and say, I'm going to give you free entry. Mm-hmm. But you're going to be my odd man out. So you might sit here all day and play board games with me while I run this tournament. Yeah. Or you might get to play all day for free. Mm-hmm. That's probably the best way to handle it. Then he can play with whatever he wants. But if you play, don't make excuses when you win or lose. Yeah. Because I've heard it from the other end. Like the only reason he beat me is because I was playing this team. And I hated hearing that oh, yeah. at a tournament in Texas. It's like, shut up, dude. You're the TO. Don't. Don't. Make your players feel like the only reason they beat you is because you were playing a lesser team. Mm-hmm. I thought that was just as bad as saying, yeah. would, I like, would you like to tap first since you couldn't beat me? If I lose, I lost. I mean, yeah. I don't need to yeah, hear course. about it. So just figure out what your style is. Ask your players. Yeah, A lot of players, like Steve said, three years ago at Oklahoma Bowl, I remember that. They were begging us to play. Yeah. They probably knew we weren't going to win it. <laughs> There's a lot to that. <laughs> but they really just wanted us to play, and they didn't care if we won it. So. Now, as a tournament organizer, I would much rather sit out to make sure everything is taken care of. But I'm also, if it's a small enough tournament and we're just there to have fun, I have no issue. Right. But when we get you know 60 people at Oklahoma, I'm not playing. <laughs> I don't like sitting the whole time. I don't, I'm not saying I like it, but I feel I agree better about it. I'm saying... As a TO from a big tournament, sitting out is the best thing. And to have a staff of people sitting out with you is the best thing. I'm saying as a person, it drives me insane. (laughs) Yeah. So if you say you can play, I'm so ready to go play. It makes the day much longer. And to follow up, this is not Magic the Gathering or anything else. Don't drop out of tournaments. Yeah. Don't drop out of tournaments. That, That is annoying. You mess up everything. And we don't get to do these every week. It's not Friday Night Magic where you get to play every week. And yeah. if you don't get a prize, you can go home early. Take your lumps. Enjoy it. Have some fun. You might actually lose, learn something by playing that third and fourth game. There's a lot of times the fourth round or the last round match is the most fun. Because you just don't care at that point. And sometimes you play better because you're like, yeah, hey, I guess yeah. you're not overly stressed. Not at all. So, Like, it doesn't matter. I'm just here to have fun. So there you go. That's my two cents of these tournament things. Yeah. So um, back to Chaos Cup. Okay. <laughs> Registration's open. It's coming around the corner. I'm sad to report that the sweetest guys that we normally hang out with, they're not coming. But I'm really close to getting Jennifer going, and I want her to kind of go experience it too, the whole yeah. thing. So hoping it all works out. I don't know exactly what we have planned, but you're still- playing in the tournament Friday night. Nope. Because you want more Blood Bowl. Never and played then... Sevens. Not going to play Sevens. <laughs> We're going to go have sushi. If you want a whole weekend of Blood Bowl, Mark Perry is running a Sevens tournament Friday night. Yeah. He might even be running a draft Saturday night. I don't know. I don't know. He he wants to play Blood Bowl all the time. Yeah. I, I... And that's probably why he's a better player than me. Well, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. I just want to go hang out with friends, go eat sushi. What team might you take to? Casco? I haven't even thought about it. I haven't either. I'm leaning towards Bretonians just so that would be the oh, last yeah. time I could play. Corn. I'm taking corn You're if I get my corn. team in. If you get your team in. Okay. Which was supposed to be here last month. So yeah, but Chaos whatever. Cup's also offering corn and Bretonians this yeah. year. So so I bet there's a lot of those teams for the first time. I'm sure there will be. So, Nate Beam, if you're coming out, you need to bring... If you're the guy with the patches, you need to bring a bunch of patches because a lot of people are probably going to mark that off their yeah. NAF list. So I'll officially have my 26 if I go to Chaos Cup. Yeah. I don't care. I don't One really bit. care either. I played my 31. Is that yeah. how I look at it? I'm the first guy in the world to play 31 unique teams. At least. <laughs> um, anything else tournament-wise? I, I guess um, soon we're going to have to start t- thinking of Nuffleween. I've been trying to think of Nuffleween. It's getting moved has really just thrown everything into a tither. It's one of the most stressful things you can do in your life. Yeah. And I was lucky that everything just worked out extremely well so i don't have any complaints but it's just a matter of trying to get settled and not having enough time and if you could take two weeks off of work and do it yeah it might not be so bad i was lucky i was able to take three i had the fourth and my birthday and everything but yeah 
one of those days was resting because it was a hundred and some out and we moved and ugh. since this is some tournament talk and it's just loosely based tournament talk if you are in the southern midwest area here there is a experimental two-day tournament coming up oh uh, yeah scab scab yeah what naming your tournament what is, after, uh, without naming your tournament scab southern central immortal bowl oh yeah that's, without asking yeah well i mean not that i control everything but you know <laughs> just i am a control freak so of course that's going to bother me okay well Anyway, Scab is coming up. It's a two-day, first two-day tournament that I know of. In Austin. In the, is it in Austin? Mm -hmm. It's at a con, though, right? Oh, yeah. I think it's in Austin, then. I don't know. Um, for more details, you can go to Scab on Facebook and look it up. Scar. Scab Blood Bowl Tournament. Or Scars. Or the Scars. And look it up. It is a, I think, five games. Yeah. So Three I, and two. I hope they have more than 20 players so that people don't have to play the same person again. But That'd be good. I bet they get a pretty decent turnout because that area is really growing down there. So good luck to them on that. I think it's in, is it before Chaos Cup? Is the reason I bring this up. Yeah, it's in August. I was going to save this for shout outs, but I'll probably mention it there too. Uh, Gary No emailed about um, a tournament he's running called the Crossroads Blood Bowl event in Horseheads, New York, September 22nd and 23rd. Mm -hmm. It's... Saturday is a one-day three-game tournament. Sunday is a one-day three-game blood uh, dungeon bowl tournament. So that's kind of neat. Ooh, I would love to do that. Yeah. You say you don't want to play sevens, and then I'm good with dungeon bowl. I would that like would be to fun. try dungeon bowl. I think I'd we, get really frustrated, but I know it wouldn't last long. Right. Need to see the updated rules. We tried it that one time, and it was okay. It was okay. Yeah. Um, I guess they're trying to get hit twenty. They got custom d sixes and all that. Um, for more information, go to www.crossroads-gt.com slash bloodbowl.html. So what I'm hearing is if he'd fly us out, we'd make an appearance and play and sign some autographs. Yeah, okay. I'd be fine with that. Uh, just for those interested in the area, or if you wanted to travel into Texas uh, for the SCAB tournament, it is the weekend of the 17th, 18th, and 19th in August. What's on the 17th? Well, I'm sure. I'm assuming you're traveling on the 17th. Oh, okay. Starts on the 18th and 19th. Okay. I believe That's it's five curious. days. And if you want Through information, I think the two dice uphill guys are the guys promoting it. Yeah, I'm sure. I think Darren from it's, there is, it's Darren doing is it. the TO. Mm -hmm. so. so good luck to everybody on that. And I think that's it. I hope we see everybody at Chaos Cup if we go. Yeah. And you can bring us free stuff or buy our stuff. So this is July. Somebody's so going to have to step in. And bring us some chocolates, since we're not getting the delicious chocolates from Sweden. Oh, yeah. And if you're from Canada, my kids love ketchup chips. So contact me if you're going to be there, and make sure I'm going to be there, and then let me know how much it costs, and maybe I can buy some from you. I would like some of that chocolate, but I don't need it. <laughs> Anyways. It was really good. This is not shout-outs. This is just tournament talk. Right. So. so, yeah, we'll go ahead and end this, because we got nothing else to talk about. And We're we'll, just happy to talk. We really we are. That? Yeah, we just, you know, it's been a while. We're, yes. we're like a week late. It's not that big a deal. I know. But it feels like it's been forever. It does. Uh, we'll g come back and we'll be talking about the Golden Age Star players. Now let's talk about some Golden Age Star players. Golden Era Star players. Oh. We're confusing it with comics. Golden Era. Okay. Same thing. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, li I like my idea better. Yeah. Probably Maybe it's because just a I British forgot. Thing. Well, <laughs> we're just okay. used to hearing Golden Age versus Golden Era. Okay. Golden Era Star Players. What is a Golden Era Star Player? So, it's brand new to this edition, obviously. And I'll just go ahead and read the whole thing they have for it. As a general rule, Star Players are still active and still play the game meaning they can be hired as inducements with tremendous ease and no particular restrictions on their use beyond any individual league or event wishes to impose. However, some star players are clearly historical characters who have retired from the game, or in many cases, shuffled off this mortal coil, and hiring them may prove problematic. It also opens the door to the possibility of a certain element of rose-tinted reminiscence, and there is a risk that their skills and abilities may be a bit over the top, 
exaggerated through the retelling of their fantastic prowess as players. So does that mean... So, yeah, essentially these are just optional. Okay, so does that mean, like, if I have a thrower, like a human thrower, he comes with sure hands and pass, right? Mm -hmm. And you get a skill at 6, 16, 31, 51, 76, and then, like, 176. So does that mean, like, a human thrower at most is going to have eight skills plus maybe a loner? Okay. Which I've never looked at all the other star players. But does this mean like a golden era star player could have 12 skills? Theoretically. I, I believe this just opens up the door for them to do whatever they want. And they don't have to say like it's balanced. It's balanced because it's golden era. We told you. Right. Okay. Yeah. So if we look at the only person we have to look at, Jeremiah Cool, he's 390,000. Okay. He's almost morgue level. He's 8358. Okay. Which is not amazing. I mean, it's basic and it's good. Don't get me wrong. And if he's a runner, then he has a plus one agility and a plus one armor. Mm -hmm. So he has loner, block, dodge, okay. diving, catch, okay. dump off, okay. kick off, return, nerves of steel, pass, and sidestep. It's a lot. So, yeah, he is overpowered. I mean, obviously, he's super damn good. He's also 390, so that I mean, sort yeah, of for Dark Elves. Does he only play for Dark Elves? Yeah, only Dark Elf. Okay. So, and he's even distinguished different in the card packs because he's like... He's got gold on him. He's got gold on him. Yeah, okay. he's a golden era. I just wonder what else... I guess we don't really know until we get more, right? Right. But this basically just allows them to do whatever they want. See, now, first, interestingly, it does say that it could be people who are dead. So maybe this is their way of bringing Dolphar back as a star. But no. Dolphar well, will never be. Well, I was thinking be. when I first heard it, I thought it might be like all legendary star players that's never been in the game in any shape or form. Because I don't think, to my knowledge, Jeremiah Cool was not in first edition. But I've never really read the books, to be honest. So it's unfair to say that. Well, Meaning, Dark Elves didn't show up until second edition. Okay, there you go. So, I was he wondering... He was mentioned, but he was mentioned as, in the fluff, he was this legendary guy that no longer played the game. In first edition, too? Second edition. Right, in second edition. I'm there saying, was no first edition Dark Elves. Okay, then he wasn't around. That's what I'm saying, yeah. So Fluff-wise, I was when I first heard Golden Era star players, I was thinking, I wonder if they're going to take all the star players from second edition on and they can remake those but the ones that never had stats before like jeremiah cool mm -hmm. or um what's the evil von engelstein guy that supposedly killed a bunch of people uh, players like that oh i don't that know that we've never heard or yeah. seen in the did you knows if this was their reasoning to bring pull those people back i'm sure there's part of that I but yeah i don't know that's what i thought it was gonna be at first and I thought it was only going to be like a house rule type deal that your league had to do. But I guess it kind of is. I yeah, they, they flat out stay through optional. So I guess we really won't know until we see more. Right. I, I just. Uh, well, this is a short segment. No. No, <laughs> I, I, I kind of just want to know. Their th I wish we could talk to one of the designers and like yeah. hear more of what's to come with these, I guess. What's to come, who knows? But I'm pretty sure they just wanted to make a really big, badass elf and get some more of those around 400,000 players. Maybe so. Maybe that's what it's going to be. I'm thinking that's what it's going to be, is every team from now on will have your regular nine-star players and well, one 400k guy. Wouldn't Count Luther von Drakenborg and Morg be in that level of golden era star players? They might be. Oh, well, they might be, I guess. I mean, There's no reason we don't know. to say they can't. Yeah. I guess if they do an undead book. But since they've been around forever, I would say no. This is more for the past stars that are We've never completely seen retired any way, shape, or form. Or dead. Okay. Now, are there that many of them out there that we know of? Um, I'm sure if I thought about it long and hard, I could probably think of some. I mean, we'd really have to dig through the old fluff to right. really know. I mean, you you remember the stuff that you have in a picture to associate with them. Could they, interestingly enough, 
they could use this to put Bob and Jim in the game. Ooh, they could. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. That makes a lot of sense. I like that a lot. And I don't want them to do this because that means I can't get one. But every year they could release a new model sold at the Warhammer shop. Mm -hmm. Not Forge World, the exclusive one. And where Nifton is doing the different eras of Bob. You you do regular Bob, shaved head Bob, mullet Bob. So this made me think of like what kind of characters would I want to be Golden Era Star players. Yeah. And I teeter on there like I want super legendary or do I just want this character back? Because at first I was like, I want Duke Luther von Hawkfire. Sure. And I want him to replace the spot that Lude Grip Whip Arm gives Chaos Pact or Chaos Renegades. I want to take What do you mean replace? Well Lude Grip's kinda like a thrower, right? Just take him off the Chaos Renegades team and put Luth, Duke Luther Von Hawkfire as like the thrower for Chaos Renegades if you oh, wanted to okay. recruit one. I see what you're saying. Yeah. If that makes sense. Okay. But I don't know. Um, another one. I thought it'd be interesting if they brought back Spiky Norman just because it's Spiky Norman. Right. He would be good. I would like to see a human, believe it or not, that's not. Over 300,000, like, you know, I mean, Zug and Griff are good players, but they're so expensive. They really are. A Hoshikomi would be good. I w- that's the one I was thinking, or bring him back. just because I love his name, Ritter Von Baum yeah. from the old Reekland Reavers, I think that'd be really cool. But I don't know. This is, this is very interesting. And I yeah. just want to see more, and I guess we're not going to until the next magazine comes out, and who knows what they're going to have in there. Now, this could also be a way for them to bring in, don't know if they would, but um, some of the Green Bay hackers, because they're from the books. So maybe that is a golden yeah. era. Or you could do Tom O'Landry. You could do Tom O'Landry, some of the old Although coaches. I don't know if you ever played. Yeah, he's just a necromancer, dude. Yeah. What do you know? So any, any star players that you can remember looking at and going, like, I'd like to see him back in? Not really, because I like think... Like Reese Grinder, since he's a unique orc. Yeah. I wonder if they could bring him back this way. Yeah. Or like you said earlier, term Red Venom. Yeah. I would, we had already seen him. Exactly. That's elf. the thing. I really think they're probably going to be using this for people who used to play the game who don't anymore. So the only ones I could legitimately think of are Bob and Jim. If Jim ever played. Did Jim play? I think it's always alluded that he, they're both former players. Okay. Um, I don't know. This is... <laughs> So what do we think about just the concept in general? The idea of if this is what they're doing, they're taking old people from the fluff, giving them insane stats, making them around 400,000 and optional. If there's more of them, the TO guy in me wants to like, if every team had one or two of these available, yeah, which maybe only every team's going to get one. I assume every team will only get one. I think it'd be really cool to run a tournament where you give X amount of money and you get to take enough money to get that one legendary star player, like a tournament of legends or something like that. I think that'd be really neat. I mean, obviously these are going to trickle out really slow. Yeah, that's the problem. With only one out, I don't know what these kind of are besides just a star player like Morg. I think it's interesting. I like the concept. Right. You will have to see how it goes, obviously. I mean... Part of me was like, maybe the Kraken guy should have been the legendary dude because he has different stats than any other Dark Elf is ever going to get in the game. Oh, I see. So take it, that, take it like he's an outlier for each team? Right. Okay. Like Eldril. No other Elf is going to have Hypnotic Gaze, mm-hmm. so he would be one or something like that. But then at the same time, eh. I really think they just want to do... Big badass ones without explaining the formula or anything mm-hmm. else. I'm really cool with that. Like, because really, <laughs> this guy with the plus agility and all those skills, it's a lot. Oh, it's a that guy's amazing. Yeah, it would actually be cool if they were all priced the same. Yeah, and they're all crazy like that. Let's say if they all stay around four hundred thousand, then once you get five to ten or whatever, you know, many mm-hmm. years from now. You could just do a tournament where you randomize and each team gets one. Ooh, I like that a lot. Yeah, because then they should be kind of equal. and But are they just too overpowering then? It's just one. So until then, we God. could do a tournament called the Fa- Flashing Blade Bowl. So this Blades. And then it's, it's all... <laughs> 
It's seven different dark elf runners with one skill of Jeremiah Cole, and you randomly get one. Yeah. I got the one with pass block. I got the one with diving catch. I was going to say, this is um, having one really good guy and a lot of other people made me think of the new Blood Bowl game that we forgot to talk about in the beginning. Oh, I know. I was I was going to save the shout out for shout outs because we don't have many. But um, yeah, it's interesting. Do we I have mean, anything I, else about this, really? Or want to just I, I just want to see more. Oh, well, yeah. I want to see more, but it, it's good in the fact that they've made me like eager now for more Golden Era Star players. I'll probably yeah. still call it Golden Age. Yeah. But that's okay. It's an interesting concept. I don't hate it. And again, when we see more. See, when we'll I thought about the thing being like all players from the editions older than second edition. Yeah. I thought about Glart being one, and I was like, well, no, he's a regular star player. Yeah. Because the original Glart could be one of those golden era star players, while Glart Jr.'s not. Now, we could do uh, Glorgan Thorg and oh, Throggan Morgan. All the old. All the other ogres. All the ogres. You could do those. Or the Minotaurs, because yeah. there's multiple Minotaurs. That's true. We really only have one star player Minotaur, so there could be. You bring back one of the other Minotaurs from the old, you know, Thunderpelt, Amber It'd be Blow, or really whatever. It'd be really cool if they brought back Bellow Thunderslam and... Um, Thunderpelt, Hander, Hammer Blow? Thunderpelt, yeah, he's one. So. Yeah. Uh, remember the Halfling? Oh, you probably don't. There's a, a higher boosted strength Halfling, uh, Earl, Arnold Spirit Burner, I believe his name was. Hmm. Um, I could look him up real quick. Anyways, he was a stronger yeah. little halfling, stronger than normal halfling with block skill and stuff. So well, that'd be cool. And then people wouldn't gripe about him being like overly powerful because he's a golden air star player. And if you don't like him, you don't have to use him. Yeah. Maybe they should just get rid of piling on as a skill, except it's on golden era star players. <laughs> <laughs> and it works the old way, so it's really, really unique, and you, you rarely get to use it. Yeah, don't want to go down that road, because then every go- star, every Golden Arrow Star player is going to have his own special skills. <laughs> oh, that's true. And you need a card to go with it. And, yeah, and then you is... have to have an asterisk that's found in this book mm-hmm. and not in this book. Yeah, let's okay. not do that. Never mind. Don't give delete, him any ideas. Delete. <laughs> I'm just tired of the piling on argument. I just yeah. wish it would go away forever. Completely. Just gone. Gone not for needed. tournaments, gone for everything. Mm-hmm. Or... Just be unified everywhere. Yeah. And people deal with it. But that's another subject. I think we have covered Golden Era Star players. We are as much very as we can. undecided on this. But I would like to see, after seeing the star players in this book, and now we have an excuse to create even older star players, I'm ready to see more star players. It means we need to go back edition. to the fluff and really look and see if there are any players that are mentioned that were never made into star players. Might be a good idea. If I remember right, there was a captain before Griff. Like, Griff took over the reins of, like, this leadership from another guy who retired yeah. in the same fashion so that that's Jeremiah same, Cole yeah. and Hubris Ricarth did. So. That'd be cool. So, yeah, maybe we should go back and look at that. Like, Legends of the Way Legends past. of the Old Not World. Not just star players, but just people mentioned in the yeah. fluff. That's a good idea, actually. So. We'll have to look into it. All right, we'll wrap this up. We are going to come back with some shout outs. And it's time for the Mid Continental Shout Outs! Hmm, yes, Golden Era. We'll talk about the Golden Age. Are you going to do different voices every time? I don't know. That, that was my first shout out in this house. That's true. Feels so good. To yeah. break this place in. I was thinking golden era, like golden age movies or, you know. Oh, like the vaudeville. From the cinema days. Yeah. Modville. Hmm. Hmm. Um, we don't have many shout outs. I mean, we ton. probably should, but we don't. So if you, for whatever reason, skip the tournament talk, which is fine. You can skip whatever. We're not your parents. Uh, Gary No running Cross Bowl, Crossroads Bowl in Horseheads, New York, September 22nd, 23rd. More info at crossroads-gt.com slash Blood Bowl. Uh, Darren Olson's running the Scab Bowl. You can contact him through Facebook or through the Blood Bowl groups. Uh, we are running Nuffleween eventually. We're going to the Chaos Cup, so shout out to all the Chaos Cup people and everyone yeah, going. Yeah, get registered. you got to turn in your roster immediately, which I get, but 
That means I haven't turned in a roster yet. Right. Or signed up. Same here. Pretty sure we're going. So. Yeah. Um, shout out to Mark Nelson on Facebook because we mentioned we were recording. He's like, finally, I'm almost through the backlog. Well, that's awesome. So thank you for listening. It still amazes me that some people go back and listen to every episode. Yeah, I know. Because, and I get it, because I listen to a ton of podcasts, so you expect people to understand or know what they talked about. Mm -hmm. And every single podcast host has been like, I have no idea what we talked about. Right. And we're just like that. Right. Because it's just a different way your mind works. All you guys listening, or women or whatever, everyone listening is just... You take it in, and you process, and you can remember, oh, I listened to this then, or I heard about this on that episode, whereas when we live through it, it just comes out, and we don't process it. Yeah, like, in some ways, I really don't know why you ever listen to us. Well, I didn't, didn't say that. Well, I mean, but, that's what I think of. Well, and of then course. I listen to other podcasts, too, because I enjoy it. Yeah. And I'm sure that, at times, they're sitting around going, all we're doing is talking about playing a game, and why would people care? And I will say... That I ha we've had multiple people say that they enjoy us talking about our life and the things that go on because it makes us more personable or interesting and more real. And I 100% get that because I like podcasts where... I like the ones that do that too. We hear stuff instead of just the robots talking about stuff. Right. That gets real boring. Right. Or shilling a game. And, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I totally get that. So... Anyways, we do appreciate you listening to all the back episodes. Um, subscribers are up crazily higher than ever. This is awesome. Now, go really and awesome. put reviews on, on <laughs> iTunes, please. So we're We doing, will read them for you. We're doing very well in all those departments. Um, oh, shout out to The Sage on YouTube or uh -huh. Twitch, I guess, whatever. However you watch him. Uh, he got into the round of 32 on the World Cup. Oh, wow. So getting close. So is he playing for France? Oh. What? No. Wrong Shout World out Cup. to the real World Cup. Yes. It, it was an amazing World Cup this year. If you're God, I didn't watch a guy it. from Texas with a first name, Matt, and you might not understand it, but it was amazing. It really was good this year. I only watched And people want to bitch and moan about people flopping. They do it in all sports. Yeah. And you're going to say, no, it doesn't happen in football that often. <sighs> it does, too. They yeah, draw does. calls all the time. Yeah. I don't like it either. I don't like the flopping and grabbing your leg and all this stuff. But now, what I will say yeah. is you might not like soccer, and I get that. I don't like golf. They're talented. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. I don't like to watch it, so I just don't comment about it. But you cannot deny that these are the best people <laughs> with that ball with their feet. Sure, absolutely. It is amazing, and the fact that like my brother-in-law, who's a soccer coach, was talking about – Somebody tracks stats, supposedly. So don't quote me on this, but he said they were tracking how much players run per game. Mm -hmm. And like through the first five rounds or something, like one player has ran like almost 50 miles. Jeez. And that's, that's See, crazy. That's another thing about the flopping is not everybody's really flopping. If you go full speed and you're a tiny little guy and you're at your full speed and someone barely touches you, you fall down. Right. That's just how it's going to work. Now, if you don't get hurt and you're just holding your leg to fake it, that's a whole different thing. But at that but, level, if I had millions of dollars on the line yeah. or could win, let's say, a gold medal for the U.S. in World Cup, yeah. if me overacting a little bit gets me a PK kick to win a game to win the World Cup, we just slows I'm going to do it. Or, yeah. Because I played indoor soccer at a level where if you won the league, you won a T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> An eight dollars T shirt that said champions on it. You're dang right. I've grabbed you killed some, a man. I've grabbed some balls. I've you do things. Um let's clarify. You, okay. You did what? Well, one tactic really good to do is if somebody's like trying to get space in front of you, mm -hmm. if you just put your hand on their ass, this is true in all sports. Most people are homophobic and freak out. Therefore they don't think straight. <laughs> Okay. And therefore, they distract themselves from doing what they were trying to do, which is either get in your way and shield you or do whatever. Interesting. So, if I have to do something... You up the ante and just grab someone's balls. I've never, like, full-out grab balls. I have in wrestling. When I played, when yeah. I was a wrestler, if it's a matter of getting pinned or grabbing somebody's nuts to get them off of you, you grab some nuts. This so, is you grab someone's nuts to get them off. 
<laughs> yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. I'm saying in all sports, people do little things sure. to get an advantage, and whether they get caught or not is no different in soccer. Just because you don't watch it all the time and don't understand it, don't get mad about it. Right. I don't watch soccer all the time. I watch World Cup soccer. Mm-hmm. That's about the only time I watch it. Yeah, and I here. love it. I absolutely love it and probably should watch other soccer leagues around the world because there's some great players doing the same thing. But I like the fact that they're playing for a country. It also helps when they're playing for a specific goal right. that you can track. It's like watching a one-off baseball game versus watching a playoff game. Sure. You know. It changes. Yeah, it's one out of 162 games. It changes. Doesn't mean too much it's once you. totally different yeah. play style. Same thing with the NBA or anything else. Absolutely. Anyways, World Cup. I'm not trying to bag on Matt or anything, really. Yeah. World Cup was really, really freaking good this year. I don't, I don't care or know if the organization is corrupt or any of that. I'm just talking about the soccer alone was awesome. The Croatia story was amazing. Yeah. France's team that didn't look like they should have won as many games as they did. I guess that's their play style, and I have to accept it, even though it doesn't feel right. <laughs> this play style of just sit – their whole play style was just sit back, sit back, sit back, and if they get a fast break and score, they'll beat you. Huh. I still feel like Belgium was the best team in the World Cup. And I've heard that from third. multiple people. But my brother-in-law was saying that's just France's play style, so they were doing exactly what they wanted to do. And if that's what they were doing, then it obviously it worked. It got the World Cup, so you yeah. Know, so maybe they really are the best team. But really, really good. I'm gonna miss it. I can't wait. Eight years it's gonna be here in the United States. Or yeah, America, America is now officially corrupt enough to get a World Cup. Yes. So there is that going for so us. I can't, I can't wait for that. But um, shout out to all the Blood Bowlers who are also World Cup fans who talked to me throughout the time on Facebook and yeah. stuff. So good stuff. Anything else, buddy? I don't think so. Uh, we do want to give a shout out to just everyone who has been patient with us as we've been doing the move. I know that we were a week behind, I think, or so. But mm-hmm. it's not that big of a deal, but we do like to be consistent. That's one thing we have going for us. Do you want to talk about the video game really quick? Oh, yes. The video so game. shout out to the people who are going to get the new video game. I will go into more detail next episode. I'll I'll have more time to play it, and it's still not officially launched. It's okay. like the, so you're in beta. the beta stage. Uh, that's what I understand it to be, and maybe I'll wait until it's officially released. But it's Blood Bowl Death Zone on Steam, and there's only four teams right now, and it's five on five. It's five on five. It's real time, and you get to pick your choose your who you're controlling at each time. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. They use a squig for live ball. So it's running around the field while you're trying to get it, and the other team's trying to get it. I watched you play a couple of games. No, you did not. You watched me play like two minutes, which is as much as I can play. Oh, okay. Um, oh, see, I thought it was a game because it watching it. It was a game. but Watching it felt like I was watching you play the phone game, the game that was on the phone. Yeah. Where you only Crunch. had five players. Crunch. And then the first one to score wins. That's what I thought I was watching oh, you play multiple games. No. It's it's a five-minute game, but it it takes forever because it doesn't take into account the time when people score. Okay. I went through the tutorial. It's fine. But the computer, like, they complain about in Blood Bowl 2 online like the AI that you will always bad. beat the computer. You will always beat the computer. That's not a question. It's not that good of AI. It does some dumb stuff. Okay. This, I don't know that I will ever beat the computer <laughs> because it can coordinate five people at one time. And me, I'm trying to figure out how to switch to the right person to move them. Because I've got five people I have to control in real time and move them around the field, to try to hit people, to try to get the ball, to pass and it's harder than hell. I wonder eventually if they're going to, if it's successful enough, if they could make it where you could have five friends on a team all playing one character. That would be a lot more fun. And that would be manageable. Like putting you in queues. But and then, then, yeah, because you still need five people and so you need ten total. one person would be the star. Because be it's like a Rocket star. League where everybody's one character. Yeah, it, okay, if, if it did that... That would be fun. I'm saying, like, what if it's leading towards that? That'd be then more power to them. However, 
and I don't know that I've ever released this information before. Um, I was a beta tester on another game they did. Uh-huh. That was absolutely horrible. Never know. went anywhere. It was oh. called. Uh, I guess I can. I don't. I don't even know what the NDA is well, don't, anymore. Don't say it. It doesn't matter. Don't, if you're gonna get in trouble, don't. I'm say not gonna it, get in trouble. I never but, knew this. Yeah, it was um, star player coach or coach star or something like that. It was like a coaching thing. Uh huh. Unplayable. Huh. Just made no sense. I don't know that. It, like I was. This is like right after we interviewed with uh, Claire or Camille. Oh. Oh, I rem- okay. Yeah, long time ago. I barely ago. remember this, but okay. And now that we have a more consistent internet connection, we can probably interview people again. <sighs> right. And, um, but yeah, it was something to do with like star player coach, and it was just bad. It made no sense. So who knows? This might get better. You're right. If it did like a Rocket League thing where you five friends and you get to pick your guy and you just you control your own guy, mm-hmm. that would be interesting. Hmm. Without that, and maybe it'll change. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I don't have an easy way to coordinate what player is which. Well, since it's built around having one star player and like four guys, it would be really cool if the computer controlled the one star player and then there's four of your buddies. Yeah. So nobody ever plays Zug. You're just all linemen, and you can kind of... Or you, conversely, maybe I can pl- control one person, and then the AI controls the other four. And then, like, oh, the, like okay. if a real-time football game, I'm not controlling all 11 people. That's true. I'm controlling one person at the time. And I can switch between them. So that would be much better for this. And maybe that comes. Who knows? Well, give, them, give them a chance. At least yeah. they're trying something different. That, that's good because that means Blood Bowl's doing well enough for them to it expand. Was, it was 10 bucks. It is not worth 10 bucks right now. I oh, would not buy okay. it. I okay. bought it for the, the podcast, but no. Okay. But I'll go more in depth once I actually get to play it more and figure it out. We're going to force you to play 50 games. No. Probably not at this point. <laughs> you have to. It's for the podcast. Oh, you have nothing to do now. You don't have roommates to bug you or children to bug you. I've got TV to watch, movies to watch, <laughs> house to decorate. You know. Have you done it in every room? No. No. Okay. I only decorated one room. <laughs> Is that what we're calling it? Decorating? Mm-hmm. He's only decorated in one room. Uh, that's disturbing. Uh, okay. Well, you continue with your decoration. I guess we'll wrap this podcast up. We obviously had a lot to say, even though it might not be anything About one thing, at least. <laughs> and not so much about two other things. <laughs> Anyways, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for listening. And what else do I want to say? And we'll be back next month with episode 83. Yay. Whatever it is. We don't know. Podcast. Yay, podcast. Blah, blah. Good night. You can follow Both Down on Twitter at Both Down. You can follow Scott at Fat Finley, F A T F I N L E Y, and Steve at Kilowog2814. If you want to know if your team name is Both Down approved, Send a tweet to at BD approved. If you'd like to email them, the email address is bothdownpodcasts at gmail.com. Or for more information, you can visit them at bothdown.com or at facebook.com forward slash bothdown. The number one Blood Bowl podcast, right? right. From or whatever, in. In? It's the number one Blood Bowl podcast, and then I do something. Yeah. Okay. Welcome to Both Down, episode 82. (laughs) We should write this down, see? No, we don't have to. It's really not that hard. (laughs) Despite the fact that this is the seventh time. We're going to nail it this time. We. You keep looking at me and like (laughs) making little dick gestures and making me laugh. Welcome to Both Down, episode 82. <laughs> I want to say the world's number one Blood Bowl podcast. You can if you want. If it gets us through it, I don't care. What am I supposed to say? The number, number one, one Blood Bowl podcast. <laughs> <Not> number one. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Yep.